In the evening at the academy, Hu Yansong was talking to a girl together with his guys. In chasing after Wu Tong, he was no competitor to him at all, because he had run 10 kilometers and donated 10,000. They discussed a plan as well. Namely, when the fat man comes out, she'll act according to the plan. Otherwise, her parents would know how much she owed him. Half an hour later, Meng Fan finally walked out of the academy. At the same time, Hu Yansong and his boys hid behind some bushes and watched the whole thing. That girl immediately approached him and asked him for help. Meng Fan immediately remembered that this was the very first girl in the library that he had hit on, who had turned him down. Turns out she left something in the workshop on the fifth floor, and she asked him to go with him. She also assured him that he wouldn't have to look for anything, just to see her off. She also told me that this item was given to her by her mom and it is very important to her. And since there were no lights on the third and fourth floors, she was very scared. And then Batten wondered if she wanted to get back at him and play a cruel trick on him. But on the other hand, it was unlikely. It had been a whole month after all. And now he was beginning to think she was just affected by his visibility. The girl interrupted his thoughts and asked if he was listening to her at all. To which he agreed to walk her out. On the way out, he noticed that he did indeed look kind of scared and confused. Walking through the fourth and third floor, there were lights everywhere. Then this girl suggested out loud that they must have changed the light bulbs. There were lights everywhere on the fifth floor too, and his help, she probably wouldn't need it. Suddenly in a moment, she grabbed his arm. And after saying, I'm sorry, she began to undress. It's also loud enough to yell for help on the whole floor. But Tan quickly realized it was a setup and started running away from there. After running forward a bit, he heard a familiar voice. Hu Yansong and his guys came out from around the corner. He immediately started blackmailing him, saying that if Wu Tong found out what a pervert he really was, or the entire academy, it would be very difficult for him to justify himself. They also all started laughing together, happy that their plan had worked. Batten looked at the girl who had brought him, and with tears on her face, she explained that she had been threatened and had no way out. Hu Yan Song looked at Batten and said that it shouldn't bother him who threatened her, and also showed a phone recording that showed an attempted rape. Then Batten realized that if it wasn't her idea but that fool Hu Yan Song's, then it wasn't that bad. After that, he laughed loudly. Hu Yan Song did not understand why this fatty was laughing. Batten showed them his camera, which was attached to his sweatshirt, and explained that he had finished the stream and forgot to turn off the camera. In the end, everything was recorded. And then he showed a video on the phone, which shows that he never laid a finger on the girl. It also shows Hu Yansun admitting that he threatened her. If Wu Tong found out what a bastard he really was, or the entire academy, it would be hard for him to justify himself. All three of them fell to their knees and began to negotiate and beg for mercy. If their parents found out about the situation, they would kill them. It was a very good chance to take control of them, and it would be foolish not to take advantage of such a situation. So he gave them two conditions. First, he would apologize to the girl for forcing her into this. Moreover, if he continues to threaten her, he will not like the consequences at all. And the second thing is to stop pestering Wu Tung. He really didn't want to do it, but since he had no choice, he agreed to his condition. After that, already on the street, the girl came up to Batten and apologized for today's situation. Batten understood her after all. She had been threatened, but she had been stupid. At least it hadn't ended the way they'd planned. On the other hand, He'd made a rather cavalier approach to her last time, and let that mean they were now even. After such kindness on his part, he asked if he could be added as a friend on Wishat. After that, he handed her the phone and told her to scan it. As he was showing the code to add him as a friend, Meng Kai Wei called his phone, and of course, she saw who was calling him, from which she was shocked that Batten knew a star like Meng Kai Wei, and she was also surprised that they had the same last name. Mei Fan got a little nervous and started to explain that he had just jokingly written down his dorm mate like that. And after that, he apologized and said that he had to run to the dorm already, and said goodnight. Stepping back a little, he picked up the phone. After which the very real Meng Kaiwei herself starts yelling at the asshole because for some damn reason he's dropping her calls. Batten explained to her that he had been a little busy and asked what she was calling about. She immediately thought that he had a girlfriend since he was so busy, but Batten replied that he didn't have anyone yet. Afterward, she thought he had gotten a boyfriend and teased him that she had wanted another sibling for a long time, which made Batten ask him to stop talking nonsense. Since Batten doesn't tell her anything, she is left to guess from an informant close to him that he has changed a lot lately. He started running, he started streaming, he even lost weight. They fattened him up so much and it was all for nothing. He had known who her informant was for some time now, and was also outraged as to why it was being discussed at all. 
and now, in a rougher voice, he asked again why she had called him. Meng Kaiwei was surprised that he chose such an interesting tone to talk to her. And after drawing conclusions, she thought that he didn't need the tickets for Su Qingqing's concert anymore. Bitten immediately shouted happily into the phone, Wanted! After that, she told me to come to Shanghai on October 5th in advance to pick them up from her. After that, she hung up. Batten was overjoyed, for he remembered going to this concert in a past life. It would also be great to go to it with Wu Tong. On September 29th, he met Wu Tong at the stadium on the morning of the run. He has been running slower than during the marathon these days, but much faster than before the marathon. Even so, she praised him for keeping a very fast pace. And also when he talked about the marathon, she remembered that she had taken a couple of pictures of him during the marathon and forwarded the pictures to him, where she remarked that he looked great in them, after which he decided to look right their pics. He even blushed a little, since she had practically called him handsome. When he looked at the pictures, he did look good in them. He probably thought it was because he had a plus one for photogenicity. Since Wu Tung already had to leave, she said goodbye to him, and said that she would revive on the 11th. Then they would see each other. He stopped her and asked her exactly what her vacation plans were. Because from October 1st to October 10th, China is celebrating the founding day of the People's Republic of China. She told him that she would return to Shanghai because his brother had a wedding on the 15th. After which she asked why he was so interested in her. And then he revealed all his cards. And he revealed that she had two tickets to Su Chinkin's concert in Shanghai on October 5th. He had originally planned to go with his dorm mate, but it doesn't work out. So, now he's looking for someone who would be interested, and asked if she'd like to go with him. It was like she was frozen. And if she didn't want to go with him, he wouldn't take offense at all. He survived over a hundred rejections so far, he'll survive another one. Unexpectedly for Batong, she agreed with great pleasure. Wu Dong herself tried to buy a ticket to her concerts, first in Hangzhou and then in Shanghai. Both times it failed, and she even thought of going back to Shanghai and looking for tickets at the entrance. And then it turned out he had a ticket. So she asked him to tell her how much it cost and she would transfer the money to him right away. But he doesn't need the money, he got it for free. So, when he's in Shanghai, she's gonna take him out to eat. To which she happily agreed. After that, she said goodbye to him again, and told him never to disappear. Baton was over the moon because she had agreed, and now he would have a date with Wu Tung. In the evening at 6 o'clock at the academy gate, he decided to hold an unusual stream for his channel. From his academy, he will run to Sihu Lake, run along the lake and draw a couple of landscapes. After that, he showed his route on the streamer, which he will run. He will not run fast enough for everyone to enjoy the views. When he runs around with his thumb sticking out, he gets likes from everyone he meets. Now he is simultaneously performing the tasks Mad Barker 2.0, Speedwalker, and Streaming Master. He combined the three tasks and dubbed himself simply a genius. After an hour and a half, he had run 12 kilometers and was at a spot near Pagoda Leifeng. That's more than he had done during the mini marathon. Once he was at the location, he had a new assignment, Nightwalker. In order to complete the task, 100 scenic spots must be visited. A visit is defined as staying at a place for at least one hour. For that, he gets the ability to stay awake plus five, observation plus three, sense of taste plus one. Baton wasn't exactly happy about that, since it sounded like something not very healthy. If he has to walk at night instead of sleeping, it is very unhealthy. Because of this, there can be impaired vision, impaired memory, depressed psyche, lowered immunity, earlier baldness, and it will negatively affect his weight loss. So too, he assumed that this ability to stay awake should spare him from all the negative effects of sleep disturbance. If he does, he'll hack time, he'll sleep less, and he'll have more time. After rebirth, he is so short of time. It is rightly said, the more gifted a person is, the less time he has. After completing all the steps, he will have 161 points in total, plus 9 to his ability to stay awake, plus 5 to his powers of observation, plus 1 to his sense of taste. As far as observation and sense of taste are concerned, as an artist, these characteristics are the best for him. If his assumptions that the ability to stay awake is more time, then this task is simply a must-do. Especially since Nightwalker fits in well with the rest of the quests. After an hour he finished the landscape, and everyone on the streamer was delighted at how beautifully he drew. After that, he completed the first stage of Nightwalker. It requires him to visit one scenic spot. The reward is plus one point, and plus one to the ability to stay awake. With the Lifeng Pagoda finished, 
he had the Chiu Yuan Lotus Pond coming up. Everyone was also thrilled with his drawings. And finally the last scenic spot for today, the Sugan Dam. After that, he finally made it to the third stage of the Stream Master Challenge. At the same time, he collected a million views and was rewarded with plus 100 points and plus one to charm. I also managed to visit three picturesque places. All in all, the day was not wasted. So after completing the stage, he decided to end the stream and thanked all the viewers who had spent the last few hours with him. If he continues, he won't get into the dorm. Tomorrow is the start of vacation, and he congratulated everyone on the upcoming vacation. Sometime later, while he was riding in the car, he received a phone call from the very girl who was involved in the setup. As soon as he picked up the phone, he heard cries for help. When he asked what happened, she explained the situation and could hear that she was crying. She left the karaoke and a group of drunken guys followed her. When she ran, they started shouting after him, and now she was very scared. And now it's in one of the alleys near Gomai Street. He then told the cab driver to drive to Gomai Street. When he arrived at the place, he stood around the corner, and he actually saw a group of people of five people looking for some girl. With his current strength and speed, he could easily overpower a bunch of soldered bullies. But it's so dark in here, if some scumbag pops out of a dark corner, he won't be noticed. And then he remembered that among the items for the night walker assignment, he had seen something for night running. These were night vision lenses for 150 points. This item allows you to see at night as if it were daytime. When he put them on, they stood up like they were molded to him. With lenses like that, no scumbag will hide in the shadows from him. And also when he put them on, he did notice the girl who called him. She was sitting right behind the trash cans. He waved a hand at her to calm her down and gestured with his hand for her to be quiet. If a fight is inevitable, you have to hit first. Quickly and silently he attacked, quickly found himself behind his back. Batten punched him in the face with all his might. He just flew off in the direction of the group of hooligans. The boss of this company was surprised and immediately thought that Batten was drunk because he did not understand what kind of a scumbag you need to be to attack a group of peaceful guys alone out of the blue. Batten didn't understand at first why they were the ones calling him a drunken scumbag. The man in charge shouted, STAND UP! And everyone quickly stood up one after another, after which they flew right at him. But Batten was not afraid of them, for he had the advantage of plus 16 to his hand speed. Within a couple seconds, he managed to punch everyone in the face. It was only after that that they realized that their squad was powerless against him. So he decided to call the police. Batten didn't understand what was going on. He thought he had knocked him on the head too hard, because first they were chasing the girl, and now they wanted to call the police. When he saw on Batten's face that they weren't hooligans, he realized there had been a misunderstanding. So he got the girl's bag and told him that she had forgotten her purse at the karaoke, and they just wanted to return her bag and went after her. But she started running away from them for some reason. Appearances can be deceiving. They also never thought a fat guy like him would be so fast. So he decided to make it up to them that he had crumpled them a little and decided to give at least a little bit of shore to buy himself some ointment for bruises. Well, and plasters. The boss didn't need it, of course. And he thought it was unnecessary, since no one held a grudge against him. He even offered to join their squad. But he refused, as he preferred to move alone. Afterward, they wished each other good luck and parted on a good note. On the way back, she apologized to Betten for giving him so much trouble again. He understood, and he told her to forget it, because he didn't mean it. All the more reason for him to hurry back to his dorm. As we got closer to the dorm, the gates were already locked. But for him, it was no problem at all, as he should only turn on his charm and everything would go according to plan. He walked over to the booth with the guard and started banging on the glass. Afterwards, with a sweet voice and look, he apologized for interrupting his sleep. The guard agreed without any problem, but as soon as he saw the girl, his opinions changed drastically. He started talking about the rules, and he couldn't let them in at such a late hour. And in his head, the guard was proud of himself, because his uncle had done what he could, and then it was up to him. Baton didn't understand at first why this grandfather was smiling and winking. It was only a second later that he realized that the grandfather had gotten it all wrong. The charm worked on him, but it didn't help any more than it needed to. And that guard was just an old pervert. Now all that's left is to get a hotel room. The girl thought he had offered to rent a single room, so she blushed. And also the charm and started working for her, and that's why she liked him. But it was too soon for her to rent a room for two. Baton realized he'd blurted the wrong thing, and he promised her he'd help her get a room all by herself. He's got a friend who lives nearby, so he'll stay with him. As she got closer to the hotel, he had already booked her room online, and she only needed to have her ID with her. 
He also wanted to make something clear to her. He's very flattered that he likes her, but he already has a lady of his heart. She understood and only thanked him for his honesty. Ten minutes later, he found himself in a luxury apartment complex, not at his friend's place as he described. As soon as he received notifications of his enrollment in the academy, his parents immediately bought him an apartment nearby, but he never lived in it. Even though dorms are more fun, it's nice to be alone sometimes. He hadn't felt so free in a long time, at least under the roof. But while he was having fun, his mom called his phone. This apartment had a smart home, and she got a message that someone had come into the apartment. Mom immediately thought he had gotten a girlfriend and decided to come back today. He used to think it would be very convenient to open with his finger, until he found out that the damn smart lock immediately sends a signal to his parents. When he answered that he had no one, she thought that her son had a boyfriend, and was even a little happy that there would be another son. Batten promised to let her know about it if he had one. After that he went to bed, as it was already late. If Wu Tong ever became his girlfriend, he would definitely take her home to meet his parents. But it's too early to think about it now. She should be home by now, and the concert is still almost a week away. He even contemplated flying to Shanghai tomorrow and trying to meet before the day of the concert. But he quickly discarded the silly idea, as no one likes overly obsessive behavior. It is better to work on completing tasks and further pump up the characteristics, so that by the fifth day, appear in front of her in the best form. And it would be even better to do the tasks in sync. Suddenly he had a brilliant idea. From his academy to the sports palace in Shanghai is only 200 kilometers. There must be at least 10 scenic spots along the way. And if he runs streaming and giving everyone thumbs up, it will be a very fruitful run. In the evenings I would take a break from running, find some picturesque place and draw, and draw illustrations on it, and all the donations that accumulate during the stream would be given to a charity. That's how he'd get ahead with the Trangira assignment. He will simultaneously be able to run errands, set a positive example for people, and do a good deed in the end. By the time he gets to Shanghai he'll be a different man. On September 30th at 6 o'clock in the morning, he was already standing near the entrance all equipped. He also started a live broadcast before the race. Already in the first hour, he had run almost 10 kilometers. But there are almost no people on the streamer. After all, it's still very early and most of the viewers are still asleep. There are only 106 people watching right now, but only the most loyal subscribers are online. When he was running through a big traffic jam on the highway, he used to show a thumbs up like everyone else. And there was a man who didn't like it very much. This kid came up to him and grabbed him by his shirt. He threatened to stick his fingers up his ass. Batten was a little miscommunicated, and he explained that in this way he just wanted to support them and share positivity. After that, he took a swing at Batten, but then Batten didn't hesitate and quickly wrapped him up. And after that, the kid immediately started yelling that he was his subscriber. He just wanted to play him up a bit, but he didn't expect him to stay so strong. I also handed him a bottle of water. He thanked him for the gift and told him to be more careful with pranks in the future. He also has a bunch of goodies in his car and invited refreshments, but Batten declined as he needs to keep moving. After that, they wished each other good luck, and he continued on his way. He then ran 12 kilometers in 1 hour and 30 minutes, and his system, to avoid overloading his knees, recommended a short rest. And just in the traffic he met some grannies who decided not to waste time in traffic, and went out dancing. Baton decided it was a great time to take a break, and even indulge his subscribers with content. To rest, it is better not to stand on the seats, but to knead the joints. So he decided to join the grandmothers, and also put the camera on the jackhammer so that everyone could see better. When Batten had already started warming up, suddenly journalists with cameras approached him, who came to shoot a report about dancing grannies in traffic. But since it's going to be a long time before the traffic jam leaves there anyway, they decided to interview him that way at the same time. And lucky for me, there was the same cameraman who had already met Batten on a mini-marathon meter by meter. Batten remembered him, of course, when someone drives by and shoots with a big camera. It's hard to forget. He also asked why he was interviewing him. They explained that grannies dance all the time. And here he is, a real catch for journalists. And they also found out about him through his broadcast. He wanted to back out. But a new building, Newsmaker, popped up in front of his face. Upon completion, he will be awarded the Newsmaker achievement, as well as Conspicuity, plus 10, and plus Charm, plus 10. And you can also pick up another plus six to conspicuity and plus six to charm for stages. The task is certainly not the easiest, but for it, you can get as much as plus 16 to charm. Just worth appearing in the international media 10 times, or local or national media. 
even received for the tasks of Master of Streams, plus 3, to Charm gives an amazing effect. And if he gets a Newsmaker, plus 16, and if he finishes Stream Masters, plus 12, he'll be irresistible in the eyes of those around him. So he snatched the microphone from the reporter and agreed to give them an interview. After half an hour of interview, he finally finished and it was very successful. After that, the journalists began to leave, and Batten asked them not to put off reporting on him. Such a heated interview made him hungry for breakfast. So he decided to look for a place for breakfast, and after about an hour, he will continue the broadcast. It was also profitable for him, as the majority of viewers will return to the broadcast, and the system will count it as new viewings. An hour later, he was refreshed and ready to move on. After a while, he finally reached the first wire station, namely the township of Tanzi. He had to check into his hotel, shower and rest, and tomorrow he would show his viewers the scenic spots. Except that when he got out of the shower, all he took from his change of clothes was his underwear, and all his clothes were soaked with sweat and stank very badly. He obviously wouldn't want to be presented in front of Wu Tu like this. And then he remembered that among the items for the speedwalker task were clothes. There he found a three-piece tracksuit that absorbs sweat, dries quickly and is breathable and keeps you fresh. All for only 50 points. After the purchase, his new suit overlapped with his old clothes. The previously wet clothing fabric has become completely dry and smells fresh. The next day, full of energy at 6 o'clock, he wanted a full day with exploring the local food establishments. But suddenly all his plans were interrupted by three groupies. Batten was uncomfortable and asked to at least roll up his posters for now. And they also offered him to eat at a restaurant with them, but only it was 10 kilometers away. But there was no problem for these groupies as they came by car. Batten didn't understand how all three of them could fit into such a tiny car. At least they wouldn't fit him in it. The girl saw the misunderstanding on his face, and she immediately realized what was wrong here. He thought to that little car, but they actually had a microbus. Baton agreed to this adventure, but when he got into the car, he got a little tense because he saw a girl behind the wheel. As soon as that one gave eye contact, Baton was tossing all over the car from driving so fast and sharp. When those arrived on the scene, Baton threw up a couple times. This hotel they came to, they opened in a three-person crew. We even made the breakfast menu ourselves. And Batten was indeed very tasty from such a meal. And also the main one of the three girls said that they had bet with other subscribers that they would feed him at their hotel in the morning and put him to bed here in the evening. The first part of the bet had already been fulfilled. And they asked him to help them with the second part of the bet. After that, he got a new assignment called Bedless. To complete the quest, you must accept the offer of a night's lodging from strangers three times. After completing the building will be awarded the achievement Helpless, as well as plus one to fertility and plus one to bad luck. Batten was very angry and in hatred of such a dumbass. Lucian once said, The mere sight of a girl in a short-sleeved dress can immediately evoke a number of associations. Her bare shoulders, naked body, genitals, the act of intercourse, the birth of illegitimate children. On the other hand, fertility is surely a good thing. Many children is a good thing. Someday in the distant future, he would be happy to have a big family. But here is bad luck, with such a characteristic can seriously get into trouble. Ability to fertilization he can maintain at the expense of a healthy lifestyle, or in extreme cases, thanks to medical intervention. But the consequences of bad luck will take a long time to clean up. So he thought it over and refused to spend the night. The girl didn't understand why he was refusing if it was all free. He only justified his decision that he already had other plans and apologized. Since he didn't have plans until the evening, they decided to keep him until dark. That's the offer he'd already agreed to. He also lay down on the bed to relax a little. In one day alone, the number of views increased by 470,000. And the number of likes on Crazy Barker 2.0 increased by almost 800,000. If he tries his best, he'll complete the first phase tomorrow and finally take his cap not take. He rested a little longer and continued his marathon. On October 1st, he was already in Wujen. There he continued to draw illustrations. And after a few such drawings, he finally finished the first stage of the Nightwalker task by doing 10 out of 10 landscapes. For this, he was rewarded with plus 10 points, as well as plus one to being awake and plus one to being observant. After that, he went for a walk around the town, namely to the main pedestrian street of the town. After pumping his powers of observation, he began to see everything so clearly that he even noticed every movement and every rustle. He could see people in the distance as clearly as he could up close. Looking over the crowd, he saw a very strange picture. He saw a pervert molesting a girl. He quickly rushed there to save the girl. 
Batten punched that pervert really hard. The crowd standing around didn't understand why this dude was hitting another kid. And the pervert started yelling at him to let him go, and he's not really a pervert, and told him to ask her if he believed her. Everyone took out their phones and started filming her. But Batten shouted to her not to be afraid, and she told the whole truth, because he would not get out of his clutches anyway. But that girl was embarrassed and couldn't say a word. Only in a quiet voice and with tears in her eyes did she utter, He didn't touch me. This pervert knew she would be afraid to tell everyone the truth and only laughed at everyone. Batten looked at her and asked if she was sure. She tearfully ran out of there screaming that he hadn't touched her. He didn't understand because he definitely saw him groping her. But for some reason she denied it. And also the crowd said to let him go since he had nothing to do with it. The pervert started to get indignant and yelled for the fat guy to get off him. He also told him to apologize to him, and then they would both discuss the amount of compensation and moral damages. But he was sure of what he saw, and also the video must have captured everything. So he decided to call the police. The crowd was not very happy that he wanted to call the police. They started calling him names, like, you're looking at aggressive behavior plus brain dysfunction. But from the crowd there was a shout from the girl to call the police. She is ready to confirm everything. She told everyone that the creep tried to get behind her too, and when she gave him a good kicking, he moved on to a more timid victim. He thanked her and started calling the police. The pervert got very nervous and started asking that those not call the police. The girl approached Baton and quietly in his ear, told him that if he wanted to understand why the girl said that nothing had happened and ran away, he only had to listen to the voices around him. There were phrases like, dressed like a prostitute. In such a short dress you could have been raped. Why did he go for her? You should be ashamed to go out in the street like that. After what I heard, I'm determined not to let this creep get away with it. He also started yelling at the entire crowd for saying that about a girl in the first place. He didn't understand what that poor girl had done wrong and what she deserved to be treated like that. If you put the blame on the girl in these situations instead of the perverts, they will get even more brazen over time. If ever that girl sees that video, he would like to tell her the following. If they run away when they encounter the abuser rather than seek a fair name for him, he will feel impunity and his victims will be even more numerous. And the girl also added that one should not be afraid of people's gossip and judgment of fools. One should fight and stand their ground. At that time, the police had already come up and detained this pervert. They also wanted to know who the victim was. But the main victim has already fled, but she too can testify against him. And also, some aunt came up who had seen the whole thing and agreed to be a witness. An hour later, all three testified against this pervert, and they parted on a good note. But before that, Batten thanked her in particular. But it was nothing to her, since they are both on the same platform. Turns out she streams on Station 8 too, and her channel is called Casual Babe. But she had to go. And as soon as she got home, she would immediately recommend his channel to her subscribers. And he also followed up with a like, thus completing the first stage of the Crazy Liker 2.0 challenge, as well as a reward of plus 500 points, and plus one to visibility. Now he could finally afford to buy his long-awaited cap. After that, he bought that cap and only had 245 points left on his balance sheet. But he can't feel her on his head at all. Just as suddenly an ordinary man ran into him, the man fell to the floor and still didn't realize what he had hit so hard. After all, it was perfectly clear before his eyes. But as soon as Batten spoke, it was as if he had crawled out of the ground and abruptly appeared before his eyes, making this man normally so frightened. Batten gave him a hand and apologized, but the man took all the blame since he didn't notice him at all, and it's all because of that hat. He was satisfied that he hadn't bought that cap for a whole thousand points for nothing. Next, he wanted somewhere else to test all the nuances of his new stealth. Walking forward a bit, he saw a wedding of strangers that would be perfect for testing. That to enter inside the task, where the wedding was held, you need to present your invitation to the girl at the entrance. As she got closer to her, she didn't see him at all. And even when Batten started waving his arms in front of her, she didn't see him either. And he easily managed to get through it, and into the buildings where the wedding was. There was a lot of yummy stuff inside. He started putting food on his plate, and suddenly he saw the last steak and ran to it to get it for himself. But someone else started pulling the steak too. This guy who was pulling the meat yelled at Batten to get his hands off a piece of steak. Batten was in a stupor and asked if he could really see him. Toy replied with great anger that of course he could see him, for he was as big as a buffalo and only a blind man would not see him. He didn't want to get into a confrontation with anyone, as he was a stranger there in general. So he handed over that piece of steak, and then it occurred to him that this man could be just like him. Namely, to have the same system. 
But after a few seconds, that option fell away as this kid lost sight of him, though Baton stood nearby and didn't move. Then Batten formulated a scheme before him on how to use this cap. In a normal situation, people don't notice it. But when he comes into direct interaction with them, they immediately notice his presence. But if the interaction is complete and he has moved some distance away, they stop seeing him again and even forget that they encountered him. He also wondered if it only worked in real life or online too. When he started the stream, 10 minutes later, no one had even logged on to his broadcast. At this point, the wedding party was already suggesting that everyone toast the youngsters as everyone gathered. And then he wondered what would happen if he stood next to the bride, if anyone would notice him. But even if they did, he could step aside at any time. Batten didn't even notice that it might have looked like perversions from the outside. So he quickly began to calm himself down. If you have cheating abilities, it doesn't mean that you can interfere in the lives of strangers. That's why you had to watch your behavior. And do not allow yourself to dabble and remain unpunished only thanks to the system. They're having a big celebration today and no one called him and he manages to munch on free food here. So he decided to paint them as a wedding present, as a keepsake. He also took an envelope and put some money in it. Then he gave the envelope to the girl at the entrance. After he had had enough, he decided to continue on his way. As he was crossing the road, he was almost hit by a moped because of his cap. But at the last moment, he managed to jump back. The possibility of such effects from wearing the cap was something he hadn't even considered. So he decided to walk around without it for now. He'd be much safer next to a friend without a hat. From the 2nd to the 4th of October, he continued his marathon from Wuzhen City to the Sporot Palace in Shanghai. While running there for 7 hours and 45 minutes and 123 kilometers. And so on the evening of October 4th, he was at the finish line. When he crossed the finish ribbon, all his subscribers were happy for him. Everyone immediately handed him bottles of water as well as towels. He thanked everyone for their support. Some people wrote that they would meet him at the finish line, but he had no idea there would be so many. He also said he would donate all their donations to the Shanjing charity. So he gave everyone one last chance to get involved. He gave them another three minutes. After that, he would go into the stats and let everyone know how much total he got from them during this run. When he went into the stats, there were 72 million donations. The viewership at the peak was 890,000, and the length of the broadcast was 246 minutes. In real money, that's 72,000 when. It's not something he was prepared for, and he doesn't know how to get out of it either. He doubled the amount last time, and he promised to do the same this time. If you repeat the past experience again, it becomes a pattern. Charity is a good thing, but who knows how much they'll donate next time. In total, they've donated 72,000. After the platform commission, that leaves 36,000. He admits that he underestimated the generosity of his subscribers. So he decided to add 14,000 from himself. And in the end, they will donate 50,000 together. On that note, he thanked all his subscribers for their support and donations. There will be no streaming in the next few days. On the 7th, he will return to Hanzhou. And on the 8th, he will hold the first stream after the vacation. After that, he ended the broadcast. Then he went away and called his sister and said that he was in Shanghai and his sister told him to go to her. When she opened it, Batten was pleased at first. But as soon as he came in, my sister looked closely and was furious at his shape because he had removed the cute third chin. <laughs> but Batten was also really pissed off because she used to be skinny as a twig. In his sister's eyes, he was all skin and bones. They also asked him if he really came here on his own two legs from Hanzhou. She couldn't believe it because they had fattened him up with the whole family and he was such a cute, chubby boy. But it's the aftermath of their care that he's still dealing with. I also decided to turn the subject on her and asked why she was so blown away. She took him by the cheek and told him it was for a new role. Baton had some questions. Because with computer graphics you can make anyone fat on the screen. And there's no point in getting fat yourself. She said that you shouldn't compare realism with computer graphics. And then some girl in the hallway yelled, Your sister's eating for art. It was the recently debuted movie singer Baiji. He'd been seeing her for a long time, she was just visiting his sister. They also both made a bunch of food, except that my sister made me go wash my hands first. When he had come to visit his sister in his past life, she had gained weight back then too. But Baiji wasn't here. So the significant events don't change, only the details. Walking up to the table, there was a lot of delicious food. Sis needed to gain another five pounds. Lately, he had been eating only the most delicious and caloric things. 
It had been a long time since Meng Fan had eaten chicken wings, but he tried to keep his cool. He didn't even notice his sister had already put a full plate of food on his plate. He started to refuse because he's losing weight, and he can't eat it, because all his efforts will go nowhere. And then she poured him a glass of coke, which he loved so much, and had almost bought a bottle of coke earlier. So he only agreed to one small sip. As he took a small sip, the entire glass was empty, and Meng Fan didn't understand how he drank it all at all. After that drink, the sister finally got to see her true favorite brother. So before it was too late, she decided to take a picture while he was still more or less chubby. After this photo, he got a new assignment, Celebrity Relfist. To complete the assignment, you need to take a photo with a hundred different famous people. After completing the assignment, the Star Relfist achievement will be awarded, and will also give the reward of a thousand points, plus five to photogenic, plus to smile infectiousness, plus two to conspicuousness. This assignment is an elevated version of the Relfist. The rewards are generous, but taking pictures with the stars won't be easy. He decided not to waste any time and took a picture with Baiji. Baiji asked why he took a picture with her. That one came up with the fact that she was laughing so charmingly, and you couldn't miss a shot like that. The sister interrupted their conversation and told them to sit down and start eating. Except Baiji refused, as she has a red carpet event to attend tonight and she doesn't want her belly to bulge. Meng Fan heard about the red carpet and was immediately eager to go there, to do a new task in one evening, or at least take more than half of the photos with the stars. It was an opportunity he clearly didn't want, so he went there right that day. Around the red carpet, all the attention of journalists is centered. If he hangs around the stars in his cap, all the headlines in the papers will be like, SENSATION! Celebrities are haunted by the ghost of a fat guy. It's better not to be the hero of such headlines, he thought. Walking a little further, he found an autograph booth. That's what he needed. There are almost no journalists here, but every star lingers here for a couple of photos. As he approached the star, he took a photo in his cap, and he managed to do it almost invisibly. Almost, because she heard the sound of the photo right in front of her nose, but she didn't notice Meng Fan. All she had to do was put her phone on silent mode, and everything would be fine. The only thing left to do is to repeat the same thing 97 more times. Afterward, he took pictures near this booth, with everyone who came out to it. This booth turned out to be a real find for him. He had already taken a picture with 99 stars, and all he had to do was to take a picture with the last star. At this time, Baiji had already shown up, and she had dressed up very nicely. It won't count as a picture, but it'll be a keepsake. At that moment, the actor who was credited in the yellow press with having an affair with Baiji approached them. Baiji turned around and sent him far away, since she knows something has been spreading ridiculous rumors about them. She should have sued him and his pocket journos, but she didn't want to further smear herself on him. And if he doesn't stop defaming his name, she'll arrange for no one to work with him at all. Jue only humiliated her by saying that she was only found out about her because of her fictional affair with him, which made Meng Fan very angry. Meng Fong decided to teach Julia a lesson, and as he walked, Batten stepped on his shoes, which caused him to fall very awkwardly. Jue didn't understand at all how he had managed to fall like that, or what he had gotten himself caught up from. And the moment he got up all bruised on his face, Meng Fan decided to take a picture with him. And also after he completed his Star Relfist assignments, he was awarded the Star Relfist achievement, as well as plus 1,000 points, plus 5 to photogenic, plus 3 to smile infectiousness, plus 2 to conspicuousness. And to further do a mischief, he kicked his shoe like a soccer ball right into the crowd. As soon as Joey stepped into the booth, everyone immediately started taking pictures of him and asking him what happened to him. Let him think of it as an instant karmic response from the universe. It will be good for him to close himself at home for a week and think about his behavior. Next, he walked to the conference room. Then he asked the dude sitting next to him if he had a nice smile. As he did so, he took off his cap to check out the new features. At first, this dude didn't realize what a dumb question this was at all. But Meng Fan asked him to take a closer look. He took a closer look and his smile is indeed beautiful. She's not just beautiful, she's radiant. Looking at him makes him smile. After talking to this guy for a few seconds, all the photographers and reporters started coming up to him. He somehow didn't realize that he was already plus 11 in visibility. Meng Fan put on his cap and got the hell out of there. It was already tomorrow, the concert he would go to with Wu Tung. He wondered how his updated characteristics would affect the way she perceived him. The next day, outside the sports palace, stood the beautiful Wu Tung. Toward her quickly and not expectedly for her since he took off his cap in front of her, Meng Fang walked up to her. Meng Fang asked if she was scared. 
to which she replied that it was hard to be scared of him when he was smiling so radiantly. So it was not for nothing that he was pumping up his infectious smile and charm. They hadn't seen each other for a few days, and he'd already lost a lot of weight. And it's about time he made up the calorie deficit. In this way he hinted that she should fulfill her promise to take him out to eat. She was hungry herself, so she didn't mind. Toon already has a place nearby, so that's where they'll go. After a while they ate and both of them were satisfied. Especially Meng Fan, who was very tasty, didn't eat like this. Taking advantage of Sister Wu Toon's generosity, he shoveled the food in both cheeks. In fact, it's his first real date ever. And it's all working out so far, he's on a roll tonight. He wanted to surprise her with something cool. So he decided to step back to make a quick call. Wu Tong didn't understand why he had to go so far away and what secrets he had. Meanwhile, he called Baiji. Meng Fan walked back up to her and asked if she wanted to see Su Ching Chen before the concert. She gladly agreed, and they went to the meeting. But when they got closer, there was a guard standing there, and Wu Tong suggested that they put it off because the guard had a stern look. But he decided not to waste the moment and went to solve everything. After he sentenced with the guard, he pleased Wu Tong as they were let through. He took her hand to lead her further, and they both blushed. After they entered the buildings, someone approached them with the words, Little Fan, is this the girl you wanted me to meet? That was Su Ching Tseng. Wu Tun immediately wanted a picture with her, to which she agreed. She also, of course, asked for an autograph. At this time, Baiji came over and asked if she was really his girlfriend. Meng Fan started to dismiss her words and said that she was only her classmate and they were just studying together. But this is a girl and she can't be fooled. Ba Tong's eyes showed that he had a crush on her. She decided not to listen to him and take matters into her own hands, so she approached Wu Tong. Meng Fan just prayed that she hadn't said something stupid. Baiji touched her skin and complimented her that she was very cute, and her skin was good, and added that little Meng Fan had good taste, from which Wu Tong was completely red. Meng Fan got into their conversation as he saw how awkward Wu Tong was and asked her to stop being silly. After that, she asked for an apology for Baiji, but Wu Tong was even happy to meet these two stars, so she wasn't offended at all. And while Meng Fan was apologizing, Baiji decided to take a picture of them on her phone. They look really cute and she just couldn't miss the moment and also Meng Fanya's sister will also love this picture. It made sense that she would immediately send everything to her sister, but on the other hand, he didn't understand why he was the one who continued to be embarrassed. Toon has a hottie and he's not a kid anymore. Toward evening, they took their seats in the sports palace. Wu Toon has never watched a concert from the VIP area before. Her day to day is more like some kind of dream. She met not one, but two superstars. She was also surprised that he had known Baiji for a long time. He told her that she was his sister's friend. Thanks to her, they got inside before the concert even started. Putting all the facts together, his sister must be some kind of star too. Meng Fan didn't know whether to tell her the truth now, since she would find out later. Slyness wouldn't do any good, but it would be a good way to sulk a little. So he replied that she is just a sister to him, and she herself considers herself only a common laborer in the field of cinema. Wu Tung immediately started remembering who there was with the surname Meng from the movie field. She only remembered the actress Meng Kai Wei, which he confirmed. It was all so strange, since he had never mentioned her. She'd only gotten to the point that he probably didn't want to live in his star sister's shadow. But the reason is something else entirely. He just doesn't want people to ask him a lot of questions about the personal life of his star relative. And he doesn't understand the meaning of living in the shadow of someone at all. If someone is under pressure because of the success of his relative, it means that he just doesn't know how to realize himself in this life. And this story is not about him. She hadn't realized how conscious Meng Fan was. This was the second time in a day that he had opened up to him from a completely different side. And so after a few minutes of talking, the concert finally began. Su Ging Tseng would like to start with the song, Immortal Youth. After that, Wu Tong really started up, but Tan decided not to sit still and joined her dance as well. It sounds even better live than it does on record. She's already sung a few songs for everyone during this time. It's about time they took a break. During the break, they will hold a raffle. Now the cameraman will randomly point the camera at a random fan. To that lucky fan, they will give a gift. And tonight, that lucky man is Batten. At first, he was surprised, but then he remembered his pumped-up conspicuity, and there was nothing to be surprised about. He also looked very handsome on screen as he had his photogenic side pumped up as well. Once again, visibility played tricks on him. Sujin King told everyone that she knows this guy, 
Moreover, she thinks among the concert goers, there will be more people who see him, not for the first time. Batten traveled a long way before being at this concert. This is literal. As he ran to Shanghai from Hangzhou on his own feet, he streamed throughout the race and collected donations, which he then donated to a charity. Therefore, Su Qingqing asked everyone to give him a well-deserved applause together. And indeed, he is known to many people who were at the concert. And when he smiled on the big screen, his smile was transmitted to everyone. Su Jingqing had never encountered anything in her life more infectious than his smile. Even Wu Tong noticed that he really did have an incredibly infectious smile. At this time, Meng Fan was berating himself for not controlling his smile. After the raffle, she decided to continue her concert, but she was smiling almost constantly, like the rest of the audience. Meng Fan didn't realize when this would finally stop. After that, a new building called Killer Show popped up. In order to complete the quest, you must deal 1,000 points of damage to the show leaking. After completing the quest, the show killer achievement will be awarded. Also plus 10 to conspicuity, plus 5 to photogenic, plus 3 to singing technique. Even in such a situation, a new building opened up. Before he could figure it all out, he had already completed the first stage of the show killer task. Reward plus 10 points, plus 1 to conspicuity, plus 1 to photogenic, plus one to singing technique. Damage points are calculated based on the detrimental impact on the event and the degree of distraction to the system host. The system evaluates the damage to the event for one hour and awards damage points in a lump sum. This time it is awarded 21 damage points. There are also items for this assignment. There was a microphone for a thousand points. This microphone can be connected to any sound equipment with your mind. If he bought this microphone, he would be able to connect to all the speakers in the sports palace. Even Su Ching Ching won't be able to hear Su Ching Ching herself. But the reward for this assignment isn't that attractive. His visibility is through the roof. He doesn't need to be very photogenic either, and he has no plans to become a movie star. Unless it makes sense to pump up the vocals. Every girl starts to melt when a guy sings well. Turns out, while he was dangling in his thoughts, everyone had already settled down. The concert should be over in half an hour tops and his infectious smile had already taken up the lion's share of the concert. Better to put off the task for now and enjoy the moment. After the concert, he apologized to Wu Tung, but she didn't even know why he apologized, because it was by far the best concert of her life. She thanked him for such a lovely evening, and just then, a car pulled up with one of her brothers behind her. As soon as she started walking to the car, he remembered that he had to make a follow-up appointment at the end of the date, or it might be taken as if he wasn't interested in continuing the promise but he didn't even have to say anything. She turned to him herself and told him that you were returning to the academies tomorrow and offered to go with her. It was even better, but there was a big problem because tomorrow he had to go to his parents in Wenzhou. Since his death, he had never visited his parents and if his death were to happen again, he could not allow it. He'd already warned them on the phone of his arrival can't disappoint them, but Wu Tung took the initiative. It must not have been easy for her. If he said no, wouldn't she think he was blowing her off? Wu Tan saw how her question put him in a stupor, and so if he had other plans it was okay, she wouldn't be offended at all. After saying that, he realized that he was winding himself up too much, and she would take it normally. He told her that he did have other plans. He was going to go home to Wenzhou and visit his parents. She said goodbye to him then, and promised to meet him at the academy itself. After that, he went to his sister's house, and she immediately started asking him about everything from the doorstep. He didn't understand what she wanted to hear. And then she showed the picture of Meng Fan and Wu Tong and asked him to tell all about this girl. He told the same story as Bai Ji, namely that they were just studying together. Sis was already starting to guess that running twice a day and losing weight also started because of this girl they studied together. Since Qin Jiao, which was the real name of the witch teacher, had told her everything, he didn't understand why she was asking him everything. And then she shouted, You don't like guys? And he spit out all the water he was drinking. On the other hand, if he's a girl, then so be it. As they say, whatever the child wants. Meng Fan was really pissed off at her words. He didn't understand why they even got it into their heads that he liked guys. He had never had a girlfriend because he was fat all his life, not because he was gay. Seeing that she didn't care at all about what he said, he spit on the whole thing and went to draw. He also decided to tell her that he was going to his parents' house tomorrow, and he offered to let her come with him. She doesn't do anything here anyway. She just eats all day long. She can eat there too. My sister was not eager to go there, as the other mother was a very poor cook. She also told me that her parents weren't home at all. 
He didn't understand at first, as he had called them the other day and said he would be there soon. His sister also told him that they were just trying to play a trick on him. He would arrive, call, and ask, where are you? And they would say, guess, she's gonna make a video call to see how he reacts. She's already regretting telling him. Ruined all the fun. He quickly went into the room and texted Wu Tong that their parents were not home. The trip to Wenzhou was cancelled, and he would now go straight to Hangzhou. She promised to see if there were any tickets left for her car. She also asked me to send her ID. He was very happy that today was going well. He also got a new message on his phone and thought it was Wu Tong, but it was a sleepy grandfather who asked me to answer him as time permits. He didn't understand why the sleepy grandfather was writing to him. He'd recently thrown him a bunch of illustrations, and he didn't understand what else he wanted from him. He wrote to him that if more sketches were needed, he would just get to them in the evening. But he didn't write about the sketches. He knew he was in Shanghai, and he wanted to meet him in person and chat about creating a manga based on his short story. After that, he has a new assignment called Mangaka. To complete the assignment, you must start publishing your own manga chapter by chapter, also publish a Tankobon. After completing the assignment, the Mangaka achievement will be awarded. And also, after completing the assignment, will be awarded the achievement, Mangaka, as well as a plus three award to drawing skills, plus three to screenwriting, plus three to design. He liked it, since he had dreamed of becoming a Mangaka since he was a kid. He had tried to create his own manga before, but because of his inability to write a script, nothing ever came of it. His previous assignments were mostly for the sake of getting awards. For the mangaka assignment, he was willing to do even gratuitously. In addition, he had already improved his drawing skills and imagination and hand speed. And by the mangaka's poor of fulfillment, he oodles and pumps such cherished screenwriting prowess. This is an opportunity not to be missed. So he wrote him that he had a train tomorrow afternoon, so he could meet him at 10 o'clock somewhere near the south station. Tonight, he will complete the third stage and further pump up his imagination and drawing skills. If it works in conjunction with a good screenwriter, it should make a good manga. After a while, he decided to paint and finally completed the third stage of the building and was rewarded with a plus 500 points, plus three to drawing skills, plus one to imagination. The next morning, he thanked his sister for sheltering him and then he started to leave. She shouted that he should wait for her. She wanted to walk him to the train station. She wore a mask, goggles, and a headdress. Meng Fan didn't understand why he needed to see him off and when she had time to even be so thoughtful. Here the sister started to get a little indignant, because she's always been like this. If she wants to spend more time with her brother, there's nothing wrong with that. And then, he came to the realization that he just wanted to see Wu Tung in person. All she said was that it was bullshit and he was imagining things. He put on his cap and told her, be offended only at yourself, whereupon she hit the door painfully. It was like she had amnesia. She couldn't remember why she was even dressed up, out of the blue. She didn't care. She threw off all her clothes and went on to bed. Meanwhile, Meng Fan had already reached the coffee shop, where his sleepy grandfather was waiting for him. The sleepy grandfather laughed from his infectious smile. After that, he just laughed for no reason. Batan didn't realize when he would calm down, he didn't want to laugh the whole meeting. He pulled a couple sketches out of his backpack and showed them all to his sleepy grandfather. Recently signed a contract with Kawikan Platform to create a manga based on his short story Dungeon Spirits, and wants to take him on the project. So he said to name any price he wants. The most important thing is to make him his main artist. He couldn't believe if novels were making so much money now, or if he had ore deposits in his vegetable garden. And then the sleepy grandfather was a little surprised, for he really did have mines that belonged to him. He is from Yunyun province and he inherited several mines. That's why he's so slow to release chapters. Turns out he's a third generation major. Then he remembered that the most important thing was to complete the mangaka buildings. The fee should be treated as nothing more than a nice bonus. So he asked for two conditions in addition to the royalties. One, the manga must be released in single chapters. Two, he needs guarantees for the Tankabon. That was the plan. The manga will be released regularly in small chapters. And about Tankabon, he cannot promise anything. It all depends on the platform. The rights to release the print version of the manga will be owned by the platform. Even if they want to release the Tonkoban at their own expense, they will need consent first. If he accepts that deal, he could waste a lot of time never completing the mangaka quest. The sleepy grandfather saw, somehow looking disappointed. He had no idea that releasing the tank bone was very important to him. Even though he was a fan of Dungeon Spirit before he met him, he needs a week to think about it before he gives him a definitive answer. Next, he went vocal and all the while he was thinking about how to complete the mangaka assignments quickly. He was even thinking of finding a short script somewhere himself, 
and then he remembered Dove. In the dorm, he was constantly lately plotting a little romance novel that everyone was always laughing at. He immediately called Dove and asked about his novella and what's up with it now. He just finished it a couple of days ago, and after vacation I wanted to ask him to draw the cover. As for the work itself, it's an amazing story about incredibly pure feelings. Batten got a little angry and said that this nonsense will tell his women, and asked him to tell a short and clear answer to what the essence of the story is. This is a story capable of dissolving both God and the devil. A canonical writing on love, the quintessence of human genius. After the world will see nothing better. Apparently he won't get a normal answer from him over the phone, so he asked to at least tell me what it's called. Dove wanted to keep it a secret until he arrived to blow his mind. He's even jealous that he gets to taste this miracle. At that moment, Wu Tung came up, and Baton said he would meet at the dorm then and hung up. While Dove heard that Wu Tung had come up, and he was very surprised at what they were both doing there. Like a gentleman, he of course offered to take her suitcase. Wu Tung was also surprised that he was so punctual, as she had thought she would arrive before him. After that, they boarded the train and traveled home. A few hours later, Meng Fan immediately ran into the dormitory and made Dove quickly show him his novel. He didn't understand what he was in such a hurry to do. Meng Fan was in a complete stupor as the title was The Adventures of a Dorm Trapper. This novella he threw right in his face and asked what kind of game it was. I didn't expect Dove to take such a reprehensible attitude either. Dove reassured him for if universities taught love, this novel would be the main textbook. Meng Fan gave a second chance to this novella and decided to read it. And he really liked it and even got carried away with reading it. Dove saw that that he was interested and asked what he thought of his short story. Meng Fan stood up and took him by his shirt so that he was already scared, but Batten actually wanted to praise him. Who knew that, inside a slacker like him, there was a true genius of screenwriting hidden inside? And here Dove was glad that he appreciated his efforts. Batten decided to help and fix the plot a little. Some scenes were too explicit and would not pass censorship, so he cut out scenes like that. There were conflicts in some of the other scenes where there was a lack of poignancy, and the scene needed to be heightened. After a few hours, he was more or less done with the editing, and it was time to start storyboarding. And the principle of about two hours should have been enough for him. After about two hours, he finished, and Dove was amazed at how much of a genius Meng Fan was. As the story became even more interesting in manga form, Meng Fan was happy to hear that, and tomorrow he'll do a stream, sketch a couple of designs, listen to the subscribers' opinions, and promote their manga at the same time. After the stream, he'll be busy with the illustrations, and tomorrow, they will be able to upload their creations to the site. Dove was surprised, because as far as he knew, they had to sign a contract with a company first. If they just released the manga into the wild, they wouldn't get anything for it. He had the right idea. But if he contacted the platform, it was unclear if he could persuade them to release the Takabon. Pros immediately persuaded Dove not to contact the platforms, and then he tells Dove himself what he thinks about it. They only have a short novel, especially since it's their first robot, and it might be received skeptically by people. The contracting process with the platform could take weeks, if not months. Even if they get signed, they won't get paid much since they're newbies. The robot will then be edited by their human, and the output may not be at all what they wanted to convey to their readers contractual obligations. It's a lot of stress to give out chapters even when they don't have the inspiration to do so. But if they self-release the manga on the internet, then they are their own masters. If their work is a success, it will be the best way to make money. This information was already making Dove's head spin, but he didn't understand why it would be a springboard for making money. He calmed him down and convinced him that when they finished the whole manga, he would publish a tankobon with his own money which, of course, Dove quickly agreed to. The next day, Meng Fan started a stream and told his viewers that he and a friend had decided to release their own manga. Today, he'll be working on a graphics tablet, and he's looking forward to their comments. And he also intrigued everyone by saying that they will know all the answers to all the questions if they watch the stream to the end. Next, right on the streamer, he did illustrations for the manga. After a while, he was done, and he decided to get started on the cover. Everyone laughed at first at the cover, and especially at the title. He posted the first chapter today, and new chapters will be coming out every day. Also on that note, he finished the stream. After the marathon and the run-up to Shanghai, he has noticeably increased his audience. Plus, the pumped-up visibility also attracts casual viewers. In a two-hour stream, 
he racked up almost 400,000 views. His own audience should be enough to give the manga a boost without platform support. After that, I decided to finish the illustrations for the first chapter. In the evening, he finally finished the job, and he shouted so loud with joy that even Dove woke up. Meng Fan revealed that he had finally finished the first chapter, and Dove was eager to take a look at their baby with great joy and anticipation. After the viewing, Dove was very happy and satisfied. Batten's drawing is peerless and he really had golden hands. After which, they both uploaded the first chapter to the internet. Dove immediately started praying for a successful download of their manga. Meng Fan didn't understand what kind of medieval superstition this was. It's the 21st century and he's doing such nonsense. But upon entering the restroom, Meng Fan also began to pray for a successful download. Dove called out to him, saying that the check had been completed, but not quite successfully. The resolution of the uploaded images does not meet the requirements of the site. Meng Fan exhaled because he thought it was something serious. But only Golub hesitated because he didn't know how to fix the permissions when the manga was already done. For him, it was a couple of swings. After that, the test was successful. Dove and Meng Fan were so overjoyed that they started hugging with happiness. At that moment, Noodles and Datxiang walked in, who again had deja vu seeing the picture of them hugging. Meng Fan walked over to them and showed them their downloaded manga. He made rather put likes, add to bookmarks and throw donations. After that, a new assignment, Million Bookmarks, popped up for him. To complete the quest, you must accumulate 1 million bookmarks on your manga titles. After completing the task, the achievement, 1 million bookmarks, will be awarded. As well as a plus 3 award to drawing skills, plus 3 to screenwriting, plus 3 to design. After that, he received another assignment called Million Donations. In order to complete the quest, you need to accumulate 1 million yuan worth of donations on your manga titles. After completing it, you'll get achievements and the same reward as the previous one. For the first time, two whole jobs opened up at the same time. It's true what they say, hard work will be rewarded by heaven. He's having the worst luck today. The next day, he went to the academy. Almost the entire time on the steam, he was following the manga. There were already 30,000 bookmarks and 120,000 donations. The manga was uploaded last night, and the numbers are up today. If we release one chapter a day, we can complete all the tasks related to the manga in a couple of weeks. The witch saw those two Meng Fan and Noodles not listening to her again, and decided to teach them a lesson. On Friday, there will be a competition at the academy, from their group also need to declare participants. We need at least five people to participate in ten sports disciplines. She shouted Meng Fan's name to the entire audience. The one with fright and surprise became so fast that even his phone fell out on the floor. She made him enroll in at least three disciplines. At first, Meng Fan thought that this was nonsense. But then the witch moved closer to his face and spoke in a menacing voice. Do you want to record all four or even five? So he quickly agreed to three disciplines. Noodles started to burst out laughing at him for getting such a beating from the witch. And then she went over to Noodles and she also gave this sheet where you have to pick disciplines. That Noodles was given this leaf too, he was very happy, because there's nothing to mock him for. Also when she shouted his name, he dropped everything out of fright. His phone fell to the floor and shattered. Next, the witch approaches Yanan, and since he is a member of the sports committee, she instructs the rest of the contestants to find her. Since the pairing was already over, Yanan approached Meng Fan and Noodle and asked what they were waiting for and not filling out the forms. Noodles signed up to run a hundred meters and gave her the sheet and Meng Fan had some more thinking to do. Yanan asked her not to take too long with it. They don't have any couples in the afternoon, so they will go to practice. After that, TA started approaching each classmate and asking them to sign up for discipline. The Academy of Arts is mostly attended by people who are far from sports. Even he has a chance to take first place in some discipline. With a certain amount of luck, he can even advance a little in the champion task. Of all the disciplines he is closest to running, but the longest distance is 5,000 meters. Last year, the winner of the 5,000 meter race barely made it to the finish line, and it took him 22 minutes. It can be assumed that this year too, no one at the academy will run this distance faster than 20 minutes. At his training speed, he can run this distance in 25 minutes. But if he gives it his best and uses a couple of cheat tricks of the system, he will have a chance to win. And then he remembered why he himself was sitting around wondering if he had a system at his disposal. He asked his system to calculate the probability of winning each discipline. I didn't expect the odds of winning the javelin and shot put to be higher than the 5,000 meter run. So there's nothing wrong with his strength. It was now obvious to the mind which three disciplines he needed to choose. 
After lunch at the stadium, he came to practice. There were a lot of people there, but Noodles and Yanan were nowhere to be seen. Too bad his cheater sneakers won't help when throwing a cannonball or javelin. You should at least read about it on the internet. While he was standing there plugged into his phone, the guys came up. Yanan also brought along her dorm mate, Little Dian. She specially called her to help him practice. He was surprised that Little Dian was the same height as him. She is tall, but very fragile, and shy at heart. By the way, she already has experience in provincial level competitions, so he will have a lot to learn from her. Also Noodles came up and whispered in your ear that this chick keeps shitting it up about you. Looks like he's got a groupie. Yenon decided to leave them alone, and asked little Deanne to show her how to handle the balls. And he and Noodles ran somewhere else. To begin with, Meng Fan decided to go and fetch the cannonballs. While he was there getting the balls, he kept thinking about what Noodles had said. He didn't know if he was kidding him or if the girl really liked him. On the other hand, he didn't care. The main thing now was to learn how to push the shot put. The women's weighed 4 kilos and the men's 7.26 kilo. He decided to deal with problems as they arose. She took the cannonballs from him and told him to look at her. Then she got into position and swung the cannonball. Then she threw it 10 meters away. He was shocked at her strength. Meng Fan decided to first try throwing as his instincts would prompt him. He missed a little and almost hit a student, a little embarrassed that he missed so badly. Little Dian only shouted to the freaks who had called Meng Fan names to not interfere with their training and sent them away. Little Dian gave him some advice. First, he should put his body straight and relax his shoulders. First, put your body weight on your left leg and try to get into the most comfortable position. After her admonishment, he decided to try another shot. He hit about 10 meters. Everyone standing around was shocked by his throw. After that, he got a new assignment, Sniper. To complete the task, you must hit the target 10,000 times after throwing. Upon completion, the achievement Sniper will be awarded. And as a reward, plus 10 to the accuracy of the throw. He didn't understand why he needed accuracy when pushing a cannonball. He didn't understand why he needed accuracy in the shot put. For the first stage, you need to hit the target 100 times after throwing. The reward is plus 10 points plus 1 to accuracy. For the second stage, you need 1,000 times. And for the third stage, you need 10,000 times. And now he caught up with the fact that this quest had opened not because he had thrown a cannonball, but because he had hit one cannonball with another. He decided to give it a try, and it's a hit I credit. He decided to try what would happen if he designated the lawn as his target, and it worked again. Even a child can do this task. So he decided to work, and the guys behind him realized what kind of autistic person was sitting there. Little Dian came up to him and asked him what he was doing there after all. He needed to keep practicing. Batten had completely forgotten about practice. He quickly got up and went to train further. It was too silly and pointless to throw a cannonball at a cannonball just for the sake of accuracy. It would be much more fun to do it by throwing a ball into a basket. After completing the entire assignment, he'll be throwing in three-pointers cooler than Kaida. He'll even have a shot at winning a beacon basket toss competition. And given his hand speed, he could win at least a national tournament. The best place to perform sniper wouldn't even be a court, but an arcade basketball machine. There are a whole bunch of them next to the game center. That's where we're going tonight. So he did, and so on his evening stream he decided to run and paint and have fun. As he walked inside, there was a line everywhere. So he first had to wait until one of the basketball machines was free. And if he wins the CGL basketball tournament as well, it will open a direct path to provincial level competition. While he was talking to his viewers on the live broadcast, one machine was just released. This is the most common type of arcade basketball machine. Five balls and four stages. Each stage has 60, 50, 40, 30 seconds to score 40, 150, 250 points to advance to the next stage. During the last 20 seconds of each stage, goals scored will count for 3 points, the rest of the time for 2 points. But first we need to warm up. He didn't quite make it, but even that way his misses past the basket will go to credit. After throwing more balls, he completed the first phase of the sniper task, and was rewarded with plus 10 points, and plus 1 to throwing accuracy. Now he wanted to test his new accuracy. Everyone even on the streamer noticed that he started throwing better. When time ran out, he again got no further than the first stage. That said, he gets more tired throwing than running. If you continue at this pace, it will take 3 to 4 hours to fully complete the task. That said, everyone in the chat room still no one believed in him, and so Batten decided to offer a contest. You had to guess how long it would take him to set a record on this machine. He promises to send 100 yuan to the guesser. All they have to do is take a screenshot. 1,000 ball throws later, 
he completed the second phase of the sniper building. Reward plus 100 points and plus 1 to throwing accuracy. Thanks to a plus 2 to accuracy, he finally managed to reach the third stage. To perform the third stage of sniper, you have to hit the target 10,000 times, it's obviously not going to be fast. And also after each stage he gives himself 10 seconds to rest. You need to progress smoothly, and with each approach gain more and more points to fuel the interest of the audience. The goal for this approach was 230 points. After which he succeeded in doing so. Next up for the next round was a goal of 251 points. After a lot of time, he has 7,632 hits left. So he's got a couple thousand more to go. So he decided that the tasks could be completed tomorrow, and today would be enough to break the record. When he forgot the last ball, thus making the record, he was overjoyed. Also, everyone on the stream was shocked that such a fat kid could set a record. But not to his surprise, a dude came up to him and told him to get the hell out of there. Batten only told him to wait his turn, which really pissed off one of those cocky little guys. Because his bro is scoring 600 plus points. Nerds with 400 plus points like him better stand back and just sneer. Next, their boss came over and said he wanted to play this particular machine. Batan gave him a condition that he would concede the machine if he beat him. To which, of course, he agreed. Also, Batten asked if since he was so cool, maybe he would give him some time to warm up. The big guy agreed to at least a year, because it wouldn't help him anyway. If he finishes the task now, he won't stand a chance. He also bought a power bar in his system to give him more strength. So he quickly started throwing balls, as he needs to seize the moment and get the sniper assignment sooner rather than later. Everyone standing around was very surprised at the speed of the hands. Fifteen minutes later, he completed the third stage of the sniper task. He got plus 1,000 points and plus 1 to throwing accuracy. He also got the sniper achievement, and again plus 10 to throwing accuracy. After that, he gave him the ball and told him to start. The big guy was really pissed off at his casual appearance, but that would soon change, and he wouldn't even have to try. Batten stood nearby and wondered. It was good that he started first. In addition to his high accuracy, he also has a very curious throwing technique. He deftly repositioned his hands after each throw, and thus saved time. Therefore, he wanted to try it as well. He ended up scoring 600 points. He then took the ball and decided to show all the master class, as he wanted to test what a plus 13 could do to his throwing accuracy. He had single hits, much to the embarrassment of the people standing around him. When a person makes five clean throws in a row, it is called luck. But when all the throws are clean, it should be called God's technique. His throwing accuracy was dealt with and so he began to build up his velocity. After his acceleration, even the big guy was shocked as he didn't recognize him as such a monster. He ended up scoring 601 points which was exactly one point more. And then he told me that it was the first time he came to throw a ball in the basket. He didn't even try to beat him today. The big guy understood what he was driving for. Namely, that he was making a rookie out of himself so that he could humiliate him at the end. Batten didn't even want to listen to him and just went home, while giving him this machine. Unexpectedly, the big guy stopped Batten by putting his hand on him. He wanted a rematch because he wasn't playing to his full potential. Batten wanted to humiliate him even more, so he agreed. The big man ended up scoring 698 points! <laughs> and Batten scored 700 points. Stupidly, everyone's jaw dropped. The big guy was so pissed off that he wanted another rematch, only now it's the second one. Batten agreed, but now it was a huge disadvantage because this time it would not be possible to make fun of him. He needed to invest to the best of his ability so he didn't accidentally screw up. He managed to score 8 to 21 points. After that, the big man knelt before him and admitted his defeat. The big man knelt before him and admitted his defeat. For he knew that he could not overcome such a figure. Also, after his records, Batten got a link to register for the CGL tournament. Winning a world-class competition no longer seems like something prohibitive. Early the next day, he went to the stadium where he met Wu Tung. She had noticed that Meng Fan was now running so fast that at this rate, she would soon be unable to keep up with him. But Meng Fan himself realized that he still had a long way to go. Even if he becomes the fastest in the academy, he won't run far away from her. Wu Tong decided to change the subject, and noticed that the stadium was much larger than usual today. It was easy to explain because the competition was coming up and everyone was practicing. Toon wondered if he was also participating. And then Batten told her that he had signed up for the javelin throw, shot put, and 5,000 meter run. He asked this question of her as well, but unfortunately she couldn't participate in the competition as she had other plans and wouldn't be at the academy for the next week. She has to fly to Hong Kong because she has been chosen to represent the academy in an international ink painting exhibition. 
She already has a 10 o'clock flight tomorrow. She'll have breakfast and start packing for the airport. But Tan decided not to waste any time and invited her to have a meal on her tab. But Wu Tung didn't want to eat at his expense since the last time won't be enough for that concert. So she decided she'd better treat him. She's fine with that. Only in return he'll take her out to dinner when she gets back. Which she basically agreed to. At this time, Wang Yanan, as well as little Dian, had already approached the stadium. At the same time, Yanan was very sleepy and didn't believe that Batten could even come so early. Little Dian, on the other hand, believed that he was very disciplined. As they walked past the other girls, they heard talk of speculation that Steel Boogeyman and the hottie from the traditional painting department were dating. Steelbug was Batten's new nickname among those who knew nothing about him until recently. And they were also discussing the sensational video from that Su Ching Chen concert where the two of them were together. This made little Diane very embarrassed as she was very much in love with him. Walking forward a little, it was to their own eyes that they saw those walking together and chatting pleasantly. Little Dion was already depressed, but Yanan didn't want her friend to torture herself like this, so she took her hand and walked towards them. She reminded him that since he was done with running for the day, then it was time to continue training with little Diane. Batan wasn't stupid and realized that she just wanted to set them up stupidly. If he agreed now, it would only get worse. So he said he was busy right now and promised to practice when he got back. Yanan was furious that he had some business times more important than preparing for the upcoming competition. Batten only shouted in his wake that they should not worry, as he guaranteed to get a couple of medals for the general faculty. Wu Tun had gotten into positions, and since he needed to practice, she wouldn't take offense at all. But Batten didn't even think about turning down a free breakfast. It's just not in his nature. She also leaned over to him and told him that that tall girl liked him. He understood all that, but his heart was already occupied with someone else. Meanwhile, Yanan was soothing little Diane, who wouldn't stop sobbing. After that afternoon at the academy, Yanan made announcements. Namely, the competition would be two days away and their faculty should not mess up. This includes the opening ceremony. This year, they will be cosplaying characters from Crown Throw and Kuroko Basketball. She has already prepared the clothes and wigs. Participation in cosplay is mandatory for all athletes. The rest of us can participate if we wish. The first person to cosplay was Kata Sleeve. Baton immediately raised his hand. Given his throwing accuracy, he thought. Then Dove stood up like that and told everyone to be more realistic. He's no Kata Sleeves. Being the best looking guy on the faculty, he's offering his candidacy. Yanan liked it and it was dealt with. Hanamichi Sakuragi was next in line. Batan thought about it for a bit and realized that Dove was right. He really isn't slender enough to cosplay Kaide Sleeves yet, but the role of Hanamichi Sakuragi would suit him just fine. Against his height, no one could compete, so he raised his hand again. But this time he wasn't alone again, and there was a guy behind him who also raised his hand. Yanan looked and decided to assign Zhang Dasan to cosplay Hanamichi Sakuragi. Batten didn't understand why she couldn't see him, he wasn't even wearing a hat. So he got up from his desk and asked why she didn't notice him. Yanan saw him and asked him to calm down. He had already saved the most suitable role for him. It was as if he was born for her. Batten immediately thought he was going to be forced to cosplay some fat monster again. And he remembered that there is indeed a fat character, Coach Mitsueshi Anzai. But then again, he had already lost a decent amount of weight. Yanan calmed him down and told him that he wouldn't have to cosplay fat people this time. She picked him to be the centerpiece of the cosplay. Without him, all their cosplay would be meaningless. Batten immediately thought of Tetsuya Kuruoki's character. She started to climb under the table with the words, not really, and pulled out his suit, which looked great on his back. Batten was pretty pissed that he was forced to cosplay a basketball ring. The next day, there was already an opening ceremony before the start of the competition. First, everyone welcomed the first year animation students. Every year, these guys put on a real visual feast for everyone. It was also time to see what the third-year students had in store for everyone. Everyone was thrilled with their cosplay, and when they saw the steel guy cosplaying a basketball hoop, they all laughed stupidly at him. In his heart, he hated Yanan, but for him, the worst and most humiliating part is yet to come. Soon the demonstration throws will begin, and then he will be completely ashamed. Imagining that everyone would miss and hit right on his head, she nearly burst with joy. None of these cretins can throw properly, and he's bound to get hit in the head. The first ball from the slant-eyed pigeon flew straight into the back of his head. There's no way those crooked assholes are going to hit the ring. So, he decided to catch their balls himself. With a little bounce, the basketball went straight into the net. Everyone was shocked by his actions. Some even thought it was a new kind of basketball. 
Little Dan was delighted with the way he felt the trajectory of the ball's flight. He then caught the second ball, while slipping a bit to his right. Further one by one he managed to catch balls. Yanin didn't realize when Batten had time to become so fast. He was the star of that ceremony. Everyone took videos and promised to put everything on social media for everyone to know. But to himself, he realized that he was just warming up, and the real sport was ahead of him. Next, he had a speed run. Then there's the cannonball throwing. And finally the javelin throwing. In the race, he won the victory at the finish line beating his closest pursuer by two seconds. In the shot put, he pushed it 12.25 meters, vastly outperforming the other athletes. And he threw the javelin 51 meters, thus breaking the academy record. For champion tasks, the system awarded him 0.3 points of champion glory. In general, 0.3 points is quite a generous reward for winning such a low-level competition. But it's still too little too late. Next to him, the director of the academy awarded him several medals. They were the first medals ever. And the amazing thing is, he got them for participating in sports. Such victories make you believe that he can do anything. After the competition in the evening, he decided to share the happy news with Wu Tung. But it turns out she had already sent something herself. She wrote that she met Ms. Liang Ching at the exhibition today. They had such a great time that she even took him on as her assistant. Batten was in a complete stupor, for it was her mom Liang Ching in the photo. When he got home to his apartment, he decided to call his mom and ask if it was too much already. Liang Ching first thought that he was offended that she forgot to warn him that she had left home. Although on the other hand, his sister should have told him everything, which she basically did. He angrily replied, Don't play dumb, where is she now? And then his mom thought he was hinting for her to bring him some souvenir. Again, not what Batten wanted to hear. He could have sworn on anything that she understood everything. She was in constant contact with the witch and her older sister, and she couldn't be unaware of Wu Tung. There's a lot of people at that show, and for some reason, she's paying attention to Wu Tung. They're just starting to get somewhere, and she's already making a move on her. He has no idea what will happen if they become a couple. Meanwhile, mom was still wondering when she was going to tell me about her fiancé. So they decided to play a war game to see who would last the longest. Batten started telling her that she should in no way interfere in his life. Oh, and plus they'd already discussed it. But his mother said not to interfere. As she had said, whoever he chose, boy or girl, she would always support him. And he in turn promised that as soon as he had someone, he would tell her. And she asked him the question, Or did you have someone? So he admitted his loss and hung up and decided to go complain about her in the family chat room. He asked how to divorce his birth mother and all the sisters wrote that he was adopted anyway. After that, he finally lost faith in the kinship relationship. Meanwhile, he wondered if he could not reply to Wu Tong's messages, but then he would still have to answer to her. If he told her that it was his mother in the picture, she wouldn't believe it was just a coincidence. As soon as she sees how much his mother tries to control his life, she'll immediately assume he's a mama's boy. A brilliant idea came to him. He came up with a story that he finally managed to turn his phone back on because he dropped it in water and barely dried it. And he's also lost most of his information and now plans to go take it to a repair shop and try to recover the data. She, of course, got into his situation and advised him to hurry to the repair shop. She also wanted to tell him what had happened to her during the day, but she was so tired and decided to tell him everything when she got back. Batten felt better after that. At least he managed to move the timer on the bomb a little but pretty soon he would still have to explain himself. He also wondered how his mom was treating Wu Tong Yu now. Two days later at an exhibition in Hong Kong, his mother and Wu Tong were looking at the paintings. It was also the last day for Liang Qing's paintings to be exhibited there. She also wanted to thank him for his help, but Wu Tong wanted to thank her even more for making her her assistant. During these days, she had learned so much from her that she had a whole new perspective on many things. She really hopes that someday in the future she can become a professional at her level. But their conversation was interrupted by Hu Yan Song. He also came as a representative of the Academy of Arts. He had heard from his uncle that she had helped Mrs. Liang Ching with the paintings. And he was very happy for her. But tonight, she would already be relaxed since he had booked a table for them. Liang Ching interjected into their conversations shouting, Is he harassing you or what? Don't worry, I'll call the Osranu now, they'll throw him out of here in no time. Hu Yansong started to apologize to her, and also explained that he also represents their academy here. His uncle is the dean of the traditional painting faculty, his name is Hu Heng. He is a very famous painter, and also Wu Tong's mentor. Liang Qing knows Hu Heng since they are longtime buddies and asked what he wanted. Hu Yansong thought that she was busy all the time and didn't even get a chance to see Hong Kong. 
So after the exhibition was over, he wanted to take her out for dinner and then walk around the city. Liang Qing started to get angry at him because he called her a beggar or ungrateful. For two days, Wu Tong has been helping her from morning to night, running around like a squirrel. He thinks she can't take her out to eat and thank her. Hu Yansong couldn't put in at all and explained that he didn't mean it at all. Plus her gaze was very intimidating. She didn't even listen to him but just took Wu Tun's hand, Wu Tun's hand, and went with her to take the paintings to the car. Throwing the paintings into the trunks, Liang Qing asked if she had stiffly put it in place. She knew right away that she didn't want to go to dinner with this boy. And it seemed to her that he had started to press her with the fact that his uncle was his dean and mentor. But Wu Tong was in a stupor and couldn't answer anything. If she guessed right, then he deserved the way she treated him. And if not, she offered to apologize to him and pay for their dinner. After a little thought, she came to her senses and replied that the one had guessed correctly. Liang Qing even smiled slightly, as she can see through such slippery types. As soon as he approached, he immediately mentioned his uncle. Apparently, he often uses him as a cover to achieve his goals. If a person starts a conversation by mentioning his important relatives, then he himself is nothing. Afterward, they got in the car and drove to dinner. They had a nice chat there and a very good meal. After that, it's time to go shopping. To come to Hong Kong and not go shopping is almost a crime. There, Liang Qing had found a beautiful scarf that suited her very well. She had learned a lot from her during the exhibition. She should be grateful that she got to spend time with her. So for this invaluable experience, she would at least like to give this scarf as a gift. Liang Qing looked at her in surprise and asked if she felt sorry for so much money. The price tag said 10,000 yuan, but she said that she didn't need to worry about it. She was already earning a little bit of money on her own. At that time, Liang Qing went to the shop window and picked up a bag for 34,000 yuan and decided to give this purse as a gift in turn. But Wu Tong started to refuse such an expensive gift. Liang Qing then went to the display case again and showed how many bags were still lying there. If everyone refused, then who would buy them? A girl should have a good bag. A bag is a reflection of the soul. The main attribute of style, a manifestation of female individuality, Everyone is always met by clothes, and do not believe the fools who say, the best is what suits you. Therefore, it is necessary to adhere to the principle. Only the best suits me. Liang Qing called the counselor over to her and pointed at the two bags. The woman had already thought that she just needed to wrap the two bags, but Liang Qing said that they take everything but these two. The counselor was shocked and in a stupor, because in her entire career this is such a first strange case. And Liang Qing also asked her to bring them all the clothes and shoes from the latest collection. Wu Tun, meanwhile, stood like a dummy and didn't even move. And then Liang Qing came over to her and told her to just call her mom. And she really didn't hear it as she might have seemed. She actually offered to be her daughter. She had of course heard about Ms. Liang Qing's eccentricity before, but still, during the exhibition, they had gotten along well with her and even bonded emotionally. But to believe she was saying it in earnest, she couldn't believe it. As soon as Liang Qing saw her, she immediately felt some sort of connection between them. She's a pleasure to be in her company, and is easy to be with as her own. She really likes her a lot, and she wants her to be her named daughter. After saying that, Wu Tong was relieved. Wu Tong was relieved that it wasn't serious, as she had already imagined it. Truth be told, she respects her a lot, and is honored that she appreciates her so much. Liang Qing interrupted her, saying that she didn't need a groupie. She needed a daughter with whom she could have a heart-to-heart -heart chat share secrets, and she needed to know if she wanted the same. She also asked her to be honest without being dishonest. She thought about it for a while and agreed. But first, she had to talk to her parents about it. As for these things, she really can't take them. It's all too expensive. Liang Qing smiled slightly. That's right. You should tell your parents about such a thing. But he doesn't want to hear about any of these things. Wu Tang has given such an expensive gift, and now she must repay him in some way. Even if she earns a little over 10,000, still buying a scarf for 10,000 yuan, it's a big blow to her wallet. And it didn't cost her anything to buy these things. In fact, she spent far more than she did. Her gesture had even been more generous. But that's the way it is. She has figured out a way for everyone to get out of this situation. There are bags, clothes, and shoes. Wu Tun has to pick two items from each category and two accessories for each item. Either one offends her. Wu Tung agreed and began to choose and consult with her. At the same time, Liang Qing received a message from his son. He asked them not to do anything out of the ordinary. She's so much into Wu Tung that she's completely forgotten about her son. 
Strangely enough, her son likes her unnamed daughter. She wondered if he would be very upset when he found out he had another baby sister. Liang Qing replied, telling him not to worry as she knows the limits of what is allowed, which Batten could hardly believe. The next day at the stadium, he decided to host a stream from a charity fair at their academy. To begin, he decided to head to the stands of the animation department. There he was immediately greeted by a bunch of cosplayers. And he also had a brilliant idea on how to please the audience and advance the Trangira task. These fairs sell either homemade items or second-hand items. Most items cost no more than a couple dozen yuan. Since some people are attracted to the goods here, they're willing to give them away. No shenanigans, just write your name and your favorite item. Whoever writes first will get it. And he also asked the moderators to help keep a record. Then we need to contact the audience and collect shipping addresses. After that, he sprang into action. And the first viewer of Affectionate Mr. Chow, get ready to get his poster with Affectionate Zaraki Kenpachi. Next up, his girlfriend's boyfriend gets a pillow with some weird man on it. I want to be a Van Piss character. Gets plush toys in the shape of people. Wang Yi picked out an obscure long green thing that prickled very badly. Someone even under the nickname Sheng Tu wanted a cosplayer outfit. She even said yes and asked if he wanted it washed or just as is. After a while, he bought everyone what they asked for. At this point, he decided to end the stream. And all those who have not yet discounted the shipping address by the moderator can do so soon. After lunch, he promised to ship it all. Suddenly a crowd of people came up to him, and a girl came out with a bouquet. She thanked him on behalf of the whole fair and called him Uncle Bugai. And also she took out her phone and showed QR, by which it was necessary to pay for this bouquet. Batten was shocked that he'd been divorced like a schoolgirl, but it was just a joke. She just wanted him to give her his vishat. After he had given her his visha, he had a lingering feeling that he had been divorced again. At that fair, everyone was talking about how much he'd changed. It was like he was a completely different person. And it is not surprising because he has always been a great guy, and now he is also handsome. Although he remains a little overweight, but he behaves very actively and everywhere in sight. And the nickname Steel Boogie was given to him by a girl, after he repelled a girl from hooligans, and then everyone picked up on it. But not all girls started paying attention to him because of his personal qualities. Many of them began to find Bataan attractive only after they saw how popular his stream was, and how much money he spent. A witch even came up to him and asked him how Wu Tung would react when he returned to medals and lots of attention from the girls. He also asked for help with his short story. After that, they talked for a bit, and Batten decided to go to the game center for a tournament. There, the band members should have already started the tournament, and also the girl at the entrance reminded to turn on the stream. Since the last stream with throws in the basket very much liked the viewers and collected a lot of views. And today it is even more fashionable to shoot so much cool content. He decided to assign her tasks and gave her a cell phone to take pictures of him. He also gave her instructions that she should try not to film strangers for long periods of time. Otherwise the viewers would get bored. She agreed without any problems and promised not to film anyone but him. As soon as she turned on the live broadcast, there were already 1000 viewers. At this, he was immediately approached by many girls who began cheering for the camera. Batten decided not to say anything to them. Let them all PR. Anyway, he loses nothing from it. In group A, it was as if they had assembled some whipping boys, so weak were they. Among them, one dude scored a 101. Even kids score higher than that. And then they announced Yuan Fong's score of 101. It was the same dude who was the loudest threatening to tear Batten apart. Group B did manage to perform a little better. After this group comes Batten's group and the girls immediately started shouting his name and cheering for his band. Batten fought against a pretty strong opponent. This opponent was only about 100 points behind. In doing so, he scored 791 points during his time. When he only scored 671, he was exhausted and sweat was dripping from his forehead. Batten decided to look back and they were shocked to see him. They didn't believe in him at first because he looked fat. A few minutes later was the final of this tournament. The top three finishers will advance to the city competition. So Batten decided to give it his best and find out the limits of his skills. He ended up scoring 843 points, thereby breaking the record. In addition to the cup and bouquet, he also receives a game center card with a balance of 3,000 yuan. He can use this money for any entertainment at the game center. Also, the system awards him one point of champion glory, and also plus 0.5% to all stats. He totaled a whole point of championship glory for his victories in the sporting events and today's qualifier. He was already experiencing improvements in all characteristics. The champion task should be kept in mind as one of the highest priorities. 
He also took the phone from the girl and ended the stream there. At the same time, he said that he had already sent all the goods from the fair, and if someone does not receive the parcel, then he should write to the moderator. And the moment she did, a witch wrote to her, who'd made a deal with the publisher and asked to meet. So he said goodbye to everyone there and left. Half an hour later, they had already met at the cafe. The publisher liked his manga, and now they are ready to take on its release. In a couple of weeks, he'll see his tankabon. That didn't quite suit Batten, as it was a long couple weeks for him. So he asked if there was any way to speed things up by doing everything without a publisher, just with his own money. In a situation like this, if you try hard enough, you could print everything tomorrow. But only if he even orders a print run of 1,000 copies, it will cost him at least 30, 40,000. This is one option he liked a lot. She was shocked that everything was perfect for him. She asked him to think again, because it was a lot of money. But for him, money is just a tool to achieve truly important goals. At the same time, from the outside, he looked like a villain who had just come up with a plan to take over the world. But since he's so eager to do it, then she's decided to go to the print shop together right now. There went the full robot on this manga, already in Batten's apartment, together with Dove. They were sweetening their creation. He has also completed the mangaka quests. He has been awarded the mangaka achievement, also rewarded with plus five to drawing skill, plus five to scripting skill, plus five to design, and plus 100 points. He was very happy that he made the decisions to release the Tankobon with his own money, and it was well worth it. After that, he was given the new title, Professional Mangaka. To complete the assignment, you must A, publish one long novel manga or three singles. B, publish 10 Tacnobons and sell 10,000 volumes. Upon completion of the quest, the achievement Professional Mangaka will be awarded, as well as a plus five to drawing skills, plus five to screenwriting skills, plus five to design skills. Dove also offered to toast such an event. After all, it is not every day something like this happens. Batten pointed his finger at the refrigerator and said there was a Coke in there. Dove also wondered why he hadn't shown this apartment before. Because he has a great apartment. There's even a second floor. He decided just to go there. And that's where he brought the picture from. And asked what actress Meng Kawei was doing in that photo. Realizing there was no way to get out of it, he told me it was his sister. Then Dove fell on his knees in front of him and asked him to introduce her. That's why he didn't want to talk about her. If that wasn't an option for him, he asked to at least stay at his apartment. Batten agreed, only on the condition that he not bring the girls here and clean up after himself everywhere. After which he happily ran to the second floor to look around further. After a while, his sleepy grandfather wrote to him and asked him what he thought about the dungeon spirits. Which, of course, he had forgotten about. Although he has improved his screenwriting skills, he is not ready to write something on the level of dungeon spirits. There's a lot to be learned from working together with the sleepy grandfather, so we shouldn't miss this opportunity. So he wrote that he agreed, and Dead immediately replied that he would come to him in Hangzhou tomorrow with the contract. The next day they met at a cafe. The grandfather immediately asked why he was eating so little, since he was as thin as a matchstick. Batten only replied that he should not butter him up with his flattery, as he had already agreed. Then, they got down to business. In the envelope that the sleepy grandfather handed over was a contract and license documents. He asked to study them carefully. The rights to the manga and the print edition would belong to him. The manga profits are 50-50, and from the print media, it's 70% to Batten and 30% to him. Since he represents the sweet terms, Batten couldn't help but agree. But the most important thing for sleepy grandpa is that he's the one working on his manga, the rest is trivia. And for Batten, the most important thing for him is to release new chapters, and the rest is petty to him. He decided to change the subject and also get down to eating. The sleepy grandfather remembered the girls in front that they had met near the stadium. These are the same girls who came to cheer him on at the basket toss tournament dressed as maids. Batten wondered why he was watching his streams, but not releasing new chapters. They've already accomplished their main task for today. But grandpa can't go to the hotel to write, because the atmosphere is not the same. And he didn't want to go back to Shanghai right now either. So he suggested grabbing those maids and renting a karaoke room. But Batten knew a better place. There'd be a place to sing, a place to swim, and the girls would be there too. From this, the sleepy grandfather obviously could not resist, and agreed. After that, they went instead. They eventually made their way to the embankment of Lake Sihu. The sleepy grandfather was very indignant because he trusted the Khan, and the Khan had ditched him. He also threatened if he didn't take him to karaoke with the girls now. He wouldn't forget about his betrayal. But on the other hand, Batten wasn't lying. You can swim here and there's tons of girls to meet. 
You could go out and meet any one of them. The sleepy grandfather didn't understand why he needed his lake, only wasting his time like that. That's when Batten suggested we go to the hotel and write a couple new chapters. Whereupon he began to smile and began to admire the evening lake under the stars. Also, Batten started a stream in which he revealed that today, he and Sleepy Grandpa agreed to work together on a manga based on his novel Dungeon Spirits. And now he wanted to introduce that very legendary novelist Sleepy Grandfather to his own person. If there are fans of Sleepy Grandpa's work on his stream, they have a chance to ask him a question. And then Batten will choose the 10 most interesting ones and give the winners a tank top of The Travels of the Dormouse Catcher. Everyone in the chat room started writing, when's the new chapters? The next day, Batten was already seeing his sleepy grandfather off to the train. The way he accepts his robot partners is outrageous, and asked him if he was afraid he'd get back at him someday. Batten also asked what's so outrageous about his hosting that he's not even needed as a main artist anymore. But it was just a joke to get him to relax. Afterward, they embraced, and the sleepy grandfather was very much looking forward to seeing him at his place in Shanghai. But Batten also whispered that he should start the new chapters as soon as he got back. The sleepy grandfather even got a little sad, after which he went to his train. When Batten saw that he was a little upset, he wondered if he'd overreacted to him. It was already half past 12 and Wu Tong should be arriving soon, so he decided to wait for her. And after a while indeed he saw Wu Tong, who was happy to see Batten again. He explained to her that he was just seeing a friend off and decided to wait for her. He also bought her milk tea, after which they both went out for lunch as they were both hungry. At the cafe, she decided to give him the gift she had brought. It was a chopper that he really liked. She saw it on the window display when she and Mrs. Lin Ching went shopping. At first she was just helping her during the exhibition, but during that time they bonded with her so much that she offered her to be her named daughter. Even her parents were so pleased. He spit out all the tea that was in his mouth. Wu Tun even gave him a napkin and asked him what was wrong. After which, he realized that he couldn't hide the information anymore and revealed that Miss Lin Ching was her mate. Only now did she realize that she'd taken him on as her assistant for a reason. So she'd offered him to be her named daughter at his request. Baton began to justify that it wasn't at his request because it was also clear that he liked her. Why would he then have his mother turn her into his sister? He didn't know that she was going to this exhibition too. Wu Tun stopped listening to him after he said he loved her. So she asked him how much he loved her. Batten turned all red and emphasized, that's not what this is about. She asked him again how much he liked her. Now that he's called himself a bastard, I'm gonna have to get in the back of the truck. Baton told her that he liked her so much that he had changed so much for her lately. But she doesn't need to change for her. She needs to change for herself. Because she doesn't know which version she likes better. It could be that she didn't like the version of Meng Fan he thought she'd be crazy about. Or perhaps she'll be most pleased with the version of her in which she'll be most pleased with herself. Plus she asked him, doesn't he think I deserve a better version of you? Baton didn't know what to say or answer. He was over the moon that he had finally confessed his love. In the end, since they both don't know which version of him she likes best yet, there's no point in changing for her. If he really likes her that much, he should start by promising not to talk to his mother about her. She wants to handle this on her own. She believes he doesn't want his mom to influence their relationship in any way. She doesn't want that either. What she means is that she does not want his mom to influence their relationship. She does not want him to influence her relationship with his mom. And most importantly, she does not want her to influence his relationship with his mom. At the same time, Batten didn't understand how he was going to digest all this information. The girl he likes has become his mom's named daughter. The girl he was changing for says he either needs to change or he doesn't. And when she started saying she didn't want one thing to affect the other, he shut down. She decided to take matters into her own hands and started calling his mom. Meanwhile, his mom was in Dubai on a construction site. She came to see Meng Chuan, a famous architect as well as Meng Fang's father. She came to make sure he didn't get himself a mistress here. Meng Chuan realized that she was from an overnight flight and must be very tired. So he offered to take her to the hotel. Along the way, she told me about her so-called daughter. The funny thing is that Meng Fang likes the same girl. He doesn't know it yet and Wu Tong doesn't know she's his mother. He decided not to even try to go into details, and immediately asked how she was going to explain it to them. First of all, she made Wu Tung her name daughter because she genuinely liked her. It has nothing to do with Meng Fan. And secondly, it wouldn't stop him from hitting on her if he wanted to. She became her name daughter, but that didn't make Wu Tong and Meng Fan related in law or blood. You could marry her. As they say, 
good fertilizer is not poured on someone else's field. With her actions, she has practically secured this girl for Meng Fang, which will only make them closer. Ming Chuan didn't mind. He was just worried about how things would turn out the other way around. It's a good time to test their feelings. Meng Fang is a big boy, he won't be lost. Afterwards, she received a call on her cell phone from Wu Tung. Meng Chuan immediately realized that things were going downhill. Roughly speaking, a storm was brewing. The first thing Wu Tong asked was if it was true that she was Meng Fan's mother. There was no point in her hiding this information anymore, so she confirmed it. She also knew he loved her. His sister told her that. She found out through her mentor that she was going to an exhibition in Hong Kong. So she went there herself and then took her as her assistant. She wanted to get to know the girl his son liked. Mentally, he bat and asked his father for help, but he was powerless in this situation. Whereupon she asked why on earth she had made her her name daughter, but it had nothing to do with his son. After spending a few days with her, she genuinely liked her. She felt a native connection to her, which is why she made her such an offer. To be honest, at that moment, he didn't even remember Meng Fan's existence. Meng Fang then began to remember what he was doing back then. Still, he remembered that right after his conversation with his mom, he had put on his nondescript cap and set out on his Nightwalker mission. So it's all his own fault. Lin Qing doesn't know how this happened, but then she came to her senses and thought it over again, and didn't regret it for a second. This decision was spontaneous, but it was the right one. Therefore, whether she becomes her daughter-in-law in the future is already Meng Fan's concern. She took the fate of their relationship into her own hands. Then she asked if Wu Tong was going to end their relationship after she found out. Wu Tong wasn't even going to after that. She even liked the so-called mother more. After which Lin Qing praised her, as their relationship was one thing, but their relationship with Meng Fan was quite another. Also, Wu Tong informed her that her parents would like to meet her when she returned. Ling Qing agreed, and after that they said goodbye. But Batten didn't quite understand. She'd called her mother only to find out that the decision to make her a named daughter had nothing to do with him. And Meng Fan was right. It was important for her to know that she liked her regardless of Meng Fan liking her. She's fine with it now. She and his mom really are like soulmates. And between the two of them, there is still no blood bond. Then she got up from the table and said she was paying this time. And she had to run to her classes. But here, Meng Fan couldn't help but feel as if he had cut a real disaster. And in fact, he inflated the scale of the problem in his own head. I mean, basically nothing has changed. But on the other hand, things have certainly changed. He told her today that he likes her. She didn't reciprocate, but at least she didn't blow him off. Suddenly, Annan, the Academy's most famous cross-dresser, approached him. Soon, the basketball competition at the Academy would begin. Being the coach of the basketball team, he wanted to invite him to join the national team of their faculty. But there was a problem that he couldn't play basketball at all. Anin didn't see what the big deal was, since he'd seen his streamers where he threw balls right at the target. And if he doesn't want to go that way, it's easier to say so than to make up excuses. He does know how to throw balls into the baskets of arcade machines but he's never played basketball directly. He doesn't know anything about seeing the ball, passing and shooting from the play when you're being covered by your opponents. And after all, Anin wondered, he'd never really seen him on a basketball court, but he didn't care about running the ball, so he'll just be in charge of shooting the basket. And further, Anin started begging him and allegedly crying. Since it is very difficult to find normal sports guys in the animation department, he barely got five people to participate and he only managed to trick them by dressing up as a girl. So he started asking him to at least go to the first training session. Batten didn't promise accurate throws from the game, but decided to give it a try. Afterward, he offered to introduce him to the rest of the team. So they went to the basketball court where he introduced him as the new member of their team. Everyone started to cheer because they knew he was playing well and obviously wouldn't let him down. He was even greeted by female fans at that basketball stadium there. Also, one of the teammates decided to see what he was made of and threw a ball in his direction. All the others who were standing around froze and waited for the real miracle. But in the end, the miracle didn't happen. Batten couldn't catch the ball, and it hit him right in the face. Anin explained to the others to ignore it. Just receiving the ball, that's not his strong point. But his shot is divine. Batten picked up the ball and began to sort out the characteristics of the ball. It seemed lighter than the ones he'd thrown at the machine, and he thought it was just a little deflated. He won't have time to think during the game, he has to throw without hesitation. He then threw the ball and hit it exactly on target. Next, more basketballs were brought to him and he was forced to show what he could do. He ended up having all the hits clean, the whole team was shocked except for Anin since he had seen it before. They decided to try to make the tasks harder, 
and try to block his nodding. In that situation, he just needs to throw the ball as high as he can to get it over him. As soon as he threw the ball into the ring, he immediately kicked it away like a volleyball. They decided to simulate this situation again. Batan realized that he was most likely trained to block only classic throws. And if he threw something unconventional, the rusty one wouldn't know what to do. So he used the core pushing technique and hit exactly the target without the man even realizing what had happened. Everyone was dumbfounded because it looked strange and ridiculous, but the rules are not forbidden. In doing so, his female fans suited up and started cheering for him even at practice. He didn't stop and tried other techniques, kind of like a backhand throw to, or the anti-aircraft cannon where he would jump up and throw a basketball over the top. His throwing technique defies all reason, but he gets it all in. But what's the point of practicing his shots if he can't even take a pass? So Anand made him learn how to at least drive the ball. At that moment, the opponents started to approach them and something had to be done, as they should not know about their weapons. The head of the team came up and started laughing at the clown, who likes to play with machines but he doesn't know how to play real basketball. Batten couldn't bear to hear the humiliation directed at him, so since he doubted him, he offered to play one-on-one. -on -one. That being said, Anand couldn't let that happen, because that way they would reveal their team's main trump card before the game, so he thought of nothing better than to just throw the ball at him. He heard and then saw the ball, even tried to catch it, but it smacked him right in the face. The chief of the opposing team laughed very hard. And then he turned around and left, saying that it was too early for him to challenge players of his level. Anin approached him and asked him what he was thinking when he wanted to agree to play one-on-one -on -one with him. But it was all an act, and as he calls it, pretending to be the pig that threatens to eat the tiger. Anin praised him because even he bought his joke. They don't need to know about his ability. In fact, he knows how to keep himself in control and not to give in to the provocations of such jesters. But then the victory will be sweeter. And also, Anand told him that tomorrow is the first match, and they need him to stay their secret weapon as long as possible, and help them only at the decisive moment. In the meantime, he should be practicing receiving the ball. More importantly, practice everything but his throws. Batten realized that he really needed to practice. If he didn't get confident taking ground balls, he wouldn't have anything to throw. During practice, some Batten fans approached Anand, and since they were already performing with basketballs, they asked him to work with Batten on his passes. But Anin doesn't recall an instance other than when they just held the ball in their hands. Those just asked to trust, besides what can be difficult in passes. And plus in this way they can demoralize the opponent. He didn't mind and decided to try what would come of it. Those started yelling at the whole stadium that Batten is handsome and a champion in general, which put a lot of pressure on the opponents and they couldn't concentrate properly. But the coach of their team couldn't do anything about it. Since the Dean's office doesn't give out girls like that. They're not cheerleaders for their team, they're personal fans of the steel guy. In the end, the cheerleader's cunning plan worked like a Swiss watch. The next day, as Annan said, the competition began. And according to etiquette, they shook hands first. Before the match started, the referee gave time to warm up their halves. As long as Zhang Gu was at the bottom, they were very strong opponents. But the robot was also joined by his cheerleaders, who shouted, Zhang Nulo Shara, Baton is the champion, go Baton, which actually made Zhang Gu very angry. And when Batten looked up at the bleachers, he saw Wu Tung there. That said, Anin was certainly glad he had such cool cheerleaders, but he asked them to calm down. And when he saw him running away, he only reminded him that the match was about to start and asked him to come back soon. But Batten waved his hand and said we could start without him. He would be ready to step in as a substitute at a key moment. The fans saw Batten running in their direction and were already happy, but he passed them. Of course he went up to Wu Tung's place, and when the groupies saw it, it was like their hearts were broken because they were forgotten about. The first thing Batten asked her was how she got here in the first place. She just came to watch a basketball game, didn't even expect to see him here. And even more of a surprise to her was the cheer, which is very popular here. He understood, so he turned around towards the groupies and thanked them all for their support and asked that they didn't support him personally. He asked that you be cheered for the entire animation department. They understood and promised not to disappoint him. Then he thanked them again. Also, the game was about to start, and she asked why he wasn't going to the court. He explained that everything has its time, and he's also the team's biggest asset. After about 20 minutes when the game was well underway, the faculty of animation was pulling ahead with a score of 24 points, when the opponents of the faculty of game dev had 22 points. In the end, all hope was on Zhang Gu, who wanted to forget the three-pointer. But the ball was kicked, giving Batten's team the lead for now. And then, 
The referee announced the end of the first 20 minutes, the score 24-22 in favor of the animation faculty. If the game continues in the same vein, his team won't even need his help. One of Batten's team members ended up cheering and jumping so hard that he twisted his leg. That's why it's his time. At this time, Zhang Gu was yelling at his allies to start playing normally. After all, even the disabled animation students were beating them. But his team started to resent him too. He is always yelling and asking for the ball and then he throws from any position, but he doesn't really hit the ring. The coach got into their conversation and told everyone there to shut up, and also reminded them that their best player was injured and now all they need to do is show their best game and they won't stand a chance. Zhang Gu confirmed his words, because the rusty one had been replaced by that fat brat who couldn't handle the ball at all, but that still didn't mean they could relax. The coach also pointed out his mistakes and advised him to share the ball more often with number 11 and not to pull the blanket on himself. After that, the referee ordered everyone to return back to the court. At that, Batten and Zhang Gu met eyes and then they were even more excited about what was to come. The referee threw the ball to the center and that's when the match began. At the beginning, although Zhang Gu took the ball, but that smirk wouldn't last long on his face. <laughs> no more those are 11 shouted that he had been given a quicker ball. Zhang Gu decided not to listen to him and do everything himself. But as everyone expected, he didn't hit the basket at all. The ball only hit the basket. Next, this ball was thrown to Batten to show his crown and glory. He lined up a route to throw, and he threw it as hard as he could. Everyone didn't understand why he was throwing so far away from the basket because they thought it wouldn't hit. But as his team expected, he hit a shot that earned his team three more points. The score was 27, 22 in their favor. After that, even Wu Tung started yelling that he was the best. But the game continued. And after a few seconds, the ball was in the hands of the number four. And he didn't know who to pass to. After all, the 11th number and the 6th number, that is, Zhang Gu, were asking for it. Eventually, while he was thinking, Batten himself managed to take the ball away from him. Then not far back, he threw the ball and earned three more points for his team. Anin was glad that the core pushing technique was in action and was hollow. Zhang Gu was very angry at Batten because he didn't understand how the balls were flying across the court. He pretended that he didn't know how to play at all. Since they couldn't score the ball, they made decisions to defend and keep the ball out of the basket. Except Batten was ready for it, and he used unusual ball-throwing techniques. Even three people jumped in front of him to prevent him from scoring, but he managed to score even here. In the end, after a few minutes, the animation faculty wins with a score of 42-26. The whole team rejoiced because he had exceeded their most optimistic expectations. Headmaster Anin was right to call him up to the national team, but suddenly, Zhang Gu intervened in their conversation, who was furious because he had just fooled him, pretending that he did not know how to play at all. Even wanted to drag him in, but Anin stopped him. And then the coach took him by the shirt and dragged him away from there because he continues to disgrace their team even after the game. He reminded them that in the other game, the cameraman had beaten the art historian's 51-0. He reminded them that the cameraman had beaten the art historian's 51-0 in another game. And that's when Batten, along with Anin, got a little worried. At 7 o'clock in the evening on the basketball court, they met them. These guys certainly look intimidating. It's not going to be easy for them tonight. When the opponents started to enter the stadium, Meng Fan was still gone. The team was already beginning to think that they had lost, because without him, they definitely couldn't win. But after a couple of minutes, he did show up, and also started apologizing for being late. He didn't pick up the phone as he was in the workshop and a bit sketchy. Anin was mad at him, but more on that later. Now I had to warm up because I was going to have to work up a sweat. At the same time, the coach of that team warned everyone that the fat guy had incredible shot accuracy and could get to the basket from anywhere, but otherwise he was a total zero. All you have to do is not let him shoot, and the victory will be in their pocket. When the match started, Meng Fan immediately began to get clamped down, so he decided to throw the ball between his legs. But the ball was immediately taken away by another opponent. This dude threw a pass to another ally of his, and that ally scored a three-pointer. It looked cool, but the only thing is that you can't beat these guys with the old scheme. You had to change your strategy. Since they're constantly guarding, like, at least two players, that means one of Batten's team is left open. All you have to do is set up an open player as a target and give him an accurate pass. And this situation really happened. No one was holding the number 11, and he decided to give him a pass. Number 11 didn't even enter at first when he was given the pass, but he quickly caught up and thanked him for his confidence and vowed not to let him down. After which, he hit a three-pointer. The scheme was working, so we need to get the most out of it. At the same time, Anin was glad that Meng Fan had finally learned how to pass accurately. 
now they had hope of winning. This situation was then repeated a couple more times, after which others from his team scored three pointers. Eventually, after a couple minutes, the first 20 minutes ended. The operator's department leads with the score, 27-25. Hanin was crying with happiness, because he hadn't even counted on him fitting in so well with their team. He would never tire of thanking the heavens for meeting him. But the game wasn't over yet, and most likely the opponents would change their strategy. So he's going to have to change their tactics after them, and you have to be prepared for that. Meanwhile, on the other end of the stadium, opponents were resenting the coach for only knowing how to shoot to the basket, and he ended up handing out passes. So the coach decided to do a new tactic, each take on an opponent, and they block any attempts by the steel bogey to pass. After the break, there were no more free players left, no one to pass to, so he's gonna have to throw it himself. So he bounced a little bit and threw the ball right into the ring. He ended up hitting a three-pointer and the score was 28-27 in favor of the animation faculty. Anin was in great joy with the steel behemoth, for he single-handedly outplayed everyone. At the same time, all the spectators discussed that the operators changed their strategy for nothing, because Baton was false to hold two players. Eventually, after a couple minutes, the game was over. The faculty of animation wins with a score of 52-39. The system also awarded him 0.1 points of champion fame, which he was happy about. Also, Anin was so excited that he was taking the whole team out to dinner and invited Baton. But he couldn't. As the first chapter of Dungeon Spirits comes out today, afterward, he went to the dorm and called his sleepy grandfather. Batten also started a stream and told everyone that he just uploaded the first chapter of the Dungeon Spirits manga and asked everyone to rate it at the same time. To drum up activity on the new tittle, he and his sleepy grandfather have prepared prizes for viewers. All you have to do to take part in the draw is to add the website to your bookmarks. And there will be lots of prizes today. After every 10,000 bookmarks, they'll give away a small prize. And when they get 100,000, they'll give away a big prize. The first prize will be the first volume of the novella Dungeon Spirits. But he hadn't even had a chance to speak yet, and the first 10,000 had already been raised. The second prize is a tankabon of his manga, The Adventures of a Common Lover, also 10 grand. He also asked not to be asked why he was raffling off his previous manga on the Dungeon Spirits stream. He's been playing it out on his streamers for a few days now, so he asked to get used to it before that. The third prize will be one to three volumes of the novel Dungeon Spirits, and again the prize will go to ten viewers. Everyone's probably sick of all these tomes as prizes by now. Therefore, the fourth prize will be a statuette from the Spirits of the Dungeon. It's a handmade robot. Sleepy Didi ordered them from the best craftsman. They will also be raffled off in 10 pieces. The fifth prize is a Dungeon Spirits t-shirt, also 10 pieces. The sixth prize, on the other hand, will be very intriguing. Five women's costumes of the Linga Hadi from Dungeon Spirits. This is just a sketch, and the costumes are still being made. But they promise to be awesome. Batten hopes that only his female viewers get these costumes. Because if the guys get them, it won't be very cool. Meanwhile, there were over 200,000 people on the stream and there are over 100,000 bookmarks, which means it's time for the big prize. They didn't make up anything here, so 10 people will receive 888 yuan each. And he also decided to make up a story that the sleepy grandfather said that when the number of bookmarks grows to 200,000, he will also personally raffle off 1888 yuan each to the five winners. The sleepy grandfather immediately began to resent it, he decided not to sit silently and confirmed Batten's words, only he didn't say that he would also raffle off 1888 yuan each to the five winners personally from himself. It was a stab in the back, but the streamer viewers gave a bunch of giveaways. So since he has such a noble audience, he shouldn't be angry at the sleepy grandfather. Make progress on the Trangira mission. Ten minutes later, there were already 157,000 bookmarks. The number of viewers is consistently high, but bookmarks are not growing. Apparently, everyone who could has already added the title to their bookmarks. He needed an influx of fresh audiences, so he wondered if he should start painting or start raffling off the remaining gifts. But suddenly the viewership numbers on the stream started to skyrocket. That said, everyone in the chat room wrote that they came from the Pink Bunny channel. This is one of Station 8's most popular female pilots. He only went to her streams a couple times, nothing more. Baton did not understand why she had brought so many viewers to his streams. In doing so, she gave a treasure chest, which was very expensive. Batten was glad and thanked her for it. I also wrote to him in chat that he remembered the evening in Wujing. Then Batten remembered that this was the same girl who had held him up when he caught that pervert. 
He didn't realize he'd met the Pink Bunny herself. Though, considering that she always streamed in a mask, she had no chance of recognizing her. Afterward, the Pink Bunny called Batten. She'd been wanting to get on his stream for a long time, but she'd never had the right occasion. As soon as she found out that he was working on a manga for Dungeon Spirits, she immediately asked her subscribers to join his channel. She had already shared the story of his heroic deed on her streamers. Batten only asked her not to be modest, as she too had shown just as much bravery in this situation. Viewers of the Pink Bunny you'd in absentia loved. So long to advertise his channel did not have to, it was enough just to post a link to it. She also gave a shout out to all her viewers to add the Dungeon Spirits manga to their bookmarks. Batten's new manga has already racked up over 150,000 bookmarks, and she asked only to get that number up to 200,000. Her army of subscribers was incredible as she already had 180,000 bookmarks. After a couple minutes, they've already hit the 200,000 mark. So it's time for the big prizes. She won't let him off the hook because it's time to reward her bunnies. Then Batten started giving everyone gifts for 120, 130, 140, 140, 150, 160, 170, 180, 190,000 bookmarks. He gave mice to some, a cell phone to others, and a bunch of his own works. And for 200,000 as he promised with Sleepy Grandpa, they will raffle off 1,888 yuan each for 10 people. All you had to do to participate was to leave a comment. Most of the comments were about the pink bunny from Station 8. There were also three other gifts they kept secret. The time has come for them. These gifts are personally from Sleepy Grandpa, so he'll be raffling them off himself. And he also told me that these are very valuable gifts. The first gift was a whip. The best gift for sophisticated riding enthusiasts. The second gift is a candle from Sir Trudon. This brand was founded as early as 1643 in France and provided people with candles during the reign of Louis XIV. It gives an entire box with six pieces in it. Each candle is capable of exuding a bright unique fragrance for 60 hours. The third fire. These are couple bracelets by Cartier. The finest handwork. A true jewelry masterpiece. These prizes are original products from top brands. They cost him a fortune. And to enter the drawing, you have to write, True love is the greatest luxury of their lives. Pink Bunny was afraid to ask where he'd gotten those bracelets off of. She began to realize that on the stream, girls are not particularly welcome. So decided not to interfere with them and wished to have fun. The number of bookmarks on Dungeon Spirits has already grown to 240,000. So the shenanigans continue. And the sleepy grandfather will be doing it for now. Baton, meanwhile, was looking for her channel. He gave her a bunch of expensive gifts for her help. Bunny even blushed a little and thanked him for his generosity. And everyone in the chat room said it was very romantic. And that's when Batten realized that he seemed to be misunderstood here. So he decided not to dwell on it and decided to see how the sleepy grandfather was doing. In the meantime, he was still presenting the rest of the gifts. The Dungeon Spirits manga had 272,000 bookmarks, which is a very respectable result for a first chapter. But Lover's Lives already had 350,000 bookmarks. Another 70,000 bookmarks were added there during the day. The two sites have a total of 620,000 bookmarks. Completion of the million bookmarks task is just around the corner. But the donations so far have thrown only about 30,000. Up to a million is still very far. I'll have to figure out something to make money somewhere else. Meanwhile, Wu Tong wrote to him, asking what she had with the pink bunny and Uchi Zheng. Batten was very interested in this, as it turns out she was jealous. He decided to call her rather than write long messages. The first thing she asked was what was wrong with her there in that town. He agreed to tell her everything, only on the condition that she admit that she was jealous of him for her. Wu Tung just hung up without saying anything. This is a turn he clearly didn't expect, but Tan just wanted to tease her a little. After that, she sent him messages, and he already thought it was over between them. But Wu Tung wrote that she was really jealous of him, but Tan was over the moon. After that they called, he explained everything to her. After that she was calm. It's like their relationship went to a whole new level. But he decided not to waste any time and use the evening to do more useful things like manga. Plus, he's on the verge of completing the building of an illustrator, after which he began to create. After a couple of his illustrations, he did complete the illustrator assignment. He finished the fourth stage of the task, which was to draw 1,000 illustrations. As a reward, he was given plus 1,000 points, drawing skill plus 14 and plus 4. He was madly happy because he had been working on it for a long time, and he also wanted to put those hands to work. 
he decided to try randomly scribbling a couple random lines, and he remotely had a bull come out. And now he decided to put his best efforts, and all the living creatures turned out very realistic. He didn't even realize how he had managed to draw such expressive eyes. If there was a god of drawing in the universe, he would take his place today. He also tried straining his imagination. Such marvelous and vivid images in his dreams he had never seen before. But his dreams were interrupted by a witch who called him. She called to offer me a job. She had to draw a poster for a movie. The first thing Batten asked was how much they pay, since working for free was not an option for him at all. You have to draw 10 variations for 50 grand, but you'll have to make the most of it. Batten was over the moon. Because 5,000 for a poster, that was unbelievably cool for him. And he promised to work harder than ever for that kind of money. The witch was shocked at how turned on he was and thought he didn't have enough money for candy, bouquets for his new girlfriend. But that's not the point at all and he really really needs the money. And he thanked her for the order. If he sits and waits for donations, he won't complete the Trenjiru tasks for a while. We had to make money separately from the manga. A couple of minutes later, his sister put a million yuan on his phone and asked him if it was enough or if he needed more. He immediately called her and asked why she was insulting him. Sis was a little surprised that he was ungrateful how this million. She as soon as she heard that he really needed the money, she immediately came to the chubby little brother's rescue. Batten resented that he and the witch were only discussing him. Plus he didn't want to hurt his sister in any way. He just wanted to find a part-time job. She almost cried when she heard the words part-time. She offered more money and reminded him that his parents also had money and were always willing to help him. But Batten had his own view. If she really wanted to help him, she didn't ask him not to give such gifts again. Better to ask around in his circles if anyone needed to draw a good movie poster. She might be the one. <laughs> Some small movie company would be willing to trust him to paint their poster just to have the main family name listed in the artist's. But Batten would be even happier if she recommended to whoever she should. After all, it guarantees them the best quality on the market. His sister thought he was overestimating himself but still decided to believe him and asked him to send his latest robots. After seeing his illustrations, she was pleasantly surprised at how well he drew. So she decided to catch the big fish and told him to wait for an answer. After which they said goodbye. A few minutes later, she got a text message. It was Batten who rejected the transfer of a million yuan. He also wrote the messages, I accept your concern, but I return the insult. She even cried that her brother was all grown up. Meanwhile, Batten decided to take up the witch's order, since the time is not that late. A couple hours later, he had everything ready to go. The next day, Batten and Witch met at a cafe. The Witch didn't understand how he had managed to draw all this in one evening. It was only then that Batten realized that he had been a little dumb and hurried to give the order. She immediately started asking how he was doing it and even suggested that he was a cheater of some sort. It was as if he had become possessed by something otherworldly, as if someone was painting him with their hand. Batten picked up his idea and said that he was visited by inspiration, muse, or something of that series. The Witch was a little upset for she realized that he had been chosen by the gods of art. So chosen just like his mom. She is not familiar with this feeling, as she is an ordinary craftswoman and they are two geniuses. She decided to leave as she was a little upset. She also promised to give his robots to the customer, but only Batten knew that he was really a cheater and not a genius. Although even for these cheat codes, he had to die and put a lot of effort himself. When he got to the dorm in the evening, he got a bunch of messages from his sister, who threw him a bunch of corporate business cards. All he had to do was write each company himself. Still, there's a use for his sister. He decided to add everyone, someone would respond. After that, they sent him a bunch of offers and he started accepting everything. In three days, he had done a bunch of work and earned 355,000 yuan. Now it was possible to make serious progress with the Trenjira mission. But there was another problem, where to spend the money. He didn't think twice about spending small amounts, but with such capital he could do something more ambitious. While he was thinking about what to spend it on, he got the news on his phone that a boy had crashed on the rocks today while crossing the gorge on the old bridge on his way to school. A boy crashed into rocks crossing a ravine on an old bridge on his way to school. The tragedy occurred in the mountain village of Dajing. On his way to school, a child fell from a collapsing bridge. Most children in the village go to school bypassing the gorge, a journey that takes them more than two hours. The only shortcut is through this very bridge, which has long been in need of complete replacement. Those who would like to donate money to build a new bridge are asked to contact the school principal. And below was the number as well as the name of the principal, whose name is Bai. 
He decided not to waste time and chance, so he immediately called the director Bay. They arranged for Baton to add him to the Vichet and transfer the money to him. Principal Bai also thanked him from all the teachers and students of their school, after which he transferred 300,000 yuan. Thus, he completed the second phase of the Spender building. He had already spent 390,000, and for the next stage, he needed to spend 1 million yuan. As a reward, he was given 100 points, and he didn't have to break his head. The heavens themselves gave him the option to spend the money for a good cause. After some time while he was drawing, he received messages on his phone from an unknown number. This number asked Batten if he really cared about the bridge, or if he just didn't know where to put the money. Baton didn't get it at first, and asked who it was, and also what he meant. This number texted him messages that Director Bai is just looking for bride price money for his son, he can't be trusted. And if he really help, this stranger invited him to come there in person, and try to prevent him together. And at the end of the message, an address was written. He couldn't believe that this Director Bai was using this money for his own personal gain. If the money went to the wrong bridge construction, there was no point from progressing in the assignment. He could keep it, so he bought plane tickets. And immediately left Hangzhou for Xichang the next day. Batten got there as soon as he could, and in different modes of transportation. After a couple hours, he finally arrived at the site. The road, however, was not easy. He decided to dial the same unfamiliar number as someone called out to him from behind. It was a teacher who works in an elementary school, and her name is Leng Lian. Baton introduced himself, and was also surprised that she was very young. She also didn't expect him to be so young, but even more she didn't expect him to actually come. Batten decided to get to the main point, and asked what was even going on here. It was easier to show than to tell, so they went somewhere, and after a few minutes came to the building where the children are studying. Batten couldn't believe there was any way to learn here at all, but that was only the beginning of their journey. And after that, they went to one more place. That being said, the road was very dangerous and the children who live and learn there walk on it every day. They came to the very gorge where little Lin had fallen. Even a student from distant Han Chuzhou had heard the news about the economic backwardness of their region. There are tons of people before him who have donated money to fix the situation, but no one is doing anything about it. What he didn't understand was that if she knew about the whole mess, why couldn't she tell him the truth? 